Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Colton Brown, and joining me is Mr. Andrew Meadows. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, It's been a a long but productive day. Uh, it's, it's, uh, It's the first of June when we're recording, so... uh uh, that means the start of uh, a new lease for a new apartment, uh, and so uh, it's been the it's been the first of many days uh, moving some 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 stuff over to the uh, new place that I'll be sharing with Anna. Uh, so uh, you know it's it's been it's been a long and exhausting day, but uh, you know it's it's, it's slowly but uh, surely taking shape. So yeah, yeah, that's 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 how I am. That's how I am right now. Nice. Um, All the work. Uh, the the the. The uh, I don't know the saying. The <laughs> I don't know fruit, where you're going for either. The but. fruit is worth the squeeze when you're when you're moved in and you're done. It'll be yeah. worth it. Yeah, it, it's all right. We we have basically all of this month to to get all of our belongings uh, out of one place uh, and and into another. So um, yeah, all things considered, it should be a pretty stress free and uh, uh, mostly painless move, aside from the actual pain associated with lifting boxes and that sort of good <laughs> stuff. So. Yeah, you know, it's been, uh, I guess, what, a couple weeks-ish since we recorded last. Uh, talked about those who wish me dead on our last one. Um, and, then, and, and, and and a few things have happened in my life since then. Uh, I graduated from law school. I, I think I said that it would have happened already by the time that uh, episode went up, and, and indeed it did. It went up late because I was too busy graduating and, and, and uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe celebrating just a little bit. Uh, can neither confirm nor deny. But... Uh, yeah, that happened. So, so you know, congratulations. That's, that's thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and and now I'm. I don't want to say knee deep into you know bar prep, but uh, I've I've certainly started. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Pretty let much me tell you, let me tell you, uh, it's a real joy. Um, so, so yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a welcome respite from moving from, from bar prep. It's nice to just catch up with Mr. Meadows and, and talk some good stuff. And we're talking about some good stuff on this episode. Let me tell you, because we are finishing up our coverage of, uh, Netflix original series, Castlevania season four dropped on Man. Netflix, uh, a few weeks ago. And, uh, it what didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't hold any, uh, it didn't hold back any punches, I don't think, overall. And, uh, yeah, I guess pleasant surprise in the sense that, what, well, they dropped the trailer like a week or two before the whole season went up. And so it went up and we kind of forgot about it. And then I think I reminded you on the end of the last episode and you're like, oh shit, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess that's something to do. So you've been up to a few tonight. things. <laughs> you watched, you watched 10 episodes of Castlevania. I watched 10 episodes of Castlevania and that's, that's what we're here to talk about. So. I think it'll be good. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, are you excited? Are you excited to talk some Hell Castlevania? Oh yeah, I'm excited about talking about Castlevania. <laughs> Love that shit. Very good. How have you been? You know, uh, I, I talk about myself a lot, but how have you been? You been good? Yeah, I've been good. Um, I'm wrestling with a webcam. I, I have a GoPro that I hardly ever use, and they updated the driver, so I'm trying to, uh, mid-recording, I am attempting to find uh, <laughs> yeah. a good recording situation, or a good angle uh, it's a very it's, it's a very dynamic experience for me i must say <laughs> getting um, all sorts of angles in here it's great i only wish yeah. the listeners could see it but <laughs> it's it's a little wonky right now it's a little crazy but we're we're doing it live um <laughs> fuck it <laughs> we uh we went we went to blue ridge uh which is always a is a good respite from work uh we uh we rode dirt bikes and and went and got some fancy olive oil. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we got some. Uh, oh God, I can't. It, you know, it's they have like an olive oil store in downtown mm. Blue Ridge, and okay. we've been cooking a lot with those home chefs and stuff. So I was like, and everything requires fucking oil. Olive oil. Yeah. No. yeah so yeah, sure. Um, said, you know what? I'm gonna get some fancy olive oil. That's got to be a thing. There's got to be a reason why people are into it. So I got some um, some Tuscany herb. Olive oil and boy, is that it flavorful. Good. Yeah, I don't Ooh, know. Okay, well, I haven't, I haven't right. cooked with it, but but, well, but it smells oil, flavorful. Yeah, the oil itself tastes very good. Um, and I have been watching some things which belongs probably in another section. Um, and <laughs> and yeah. I'm just gonna burst out laughing because of the camera moving around. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tr- I kind of are you holding good... it? Are you, like, what are you are you holding it in your hand, well, moving it around? I, I found some Velcro on my desk. <laughs> Uh, which is probably no surprise because my desk is an absolute mess. 
Uh, and uh, I found some Velcro on the desk, and I was trying to Velcro it to my monitor, my my fucking <laughs> arm for my microphone. Uh, uh-huh, but that uh-huh. that's not working, and so now I'm just stuck like holding the fucking camera because now <laughs> I don't know where to put it. Um, much like everything uh, in my fucking life, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So <laughs> yeah, well, uh, last few episodes, the uh, the the headphone cable has been a problem. I think. yes, uh, I have I have fixed so the you headphone fixed that, cable. and so so now now we introduce a, an issue with the camera. There's always going to be something that goes wrong while we record. It's Otherwise, always an it wouldn't be a watch of your repeat hey! podcast. Hey, that's not bad. That's not that, bad. I think hey, you fix it on that. the fly. I don't know yeah. if it's just sitting on the desk or, but good it looks good. Good body shot. You you got a full full angle of the torso here. Uh-huh, uh huh. But yeah. it's uh, full, full full torso. I am now resting it on a lightsaber hilt. <laughs> oh, very good. That's exactly what it's designed it's, it's for, gone, I'm sure. It's gone full circle, so it's good. Perfect, perfect. Uh, all right, well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you don't have a fun fact for Castlevania Season 4. I do not have a fun fact for... Well, that's, 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 that's must be very disappointing. Besides the wine I'm drinking, that uh, looks awfully... It, oh, is that apothic? Apothic dark. It, it, it's, dark. It, looks, it looks Castlevania inspired, Castlevania esque. That's what I was uh, going Appropriate for. for this episode. So, Picked yeah, up at the Walmarts call. for eight ninety eight. Meanwhile, I'm drinking a tropically delicious sour beer, so that's very not Castlevania esque. I think I have a coffee porter downstairs. Maybe I'll switch to that to <laughs> to finish up the episode if I get through this in time. Um, so uh, so as to not dis- disappoint the listeners, I, I have a little bit of a fun fact that I've I've conjured um, for for the listeners. Is kind of you know it's 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 a little bit of something. Now, you know, bear in mind, we, we had a Castlevania episode previously where we talked about seasons one through three. Um, so I'm trying to do a fun fact that is more specific to season four, uh, just more specifically. Um, so as, as kind of, a, I guess, background information, this is probably something that I did talk about. Uh, the Castlevania series is principally based off of the game Castlevania three, uh, which um, is an Zelda old Lord. NES game. Yeah, it's it's so so it's, it's it is actually kind of interesting. So basically, uh, it's 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 Trevor Belmont is the main character you play as. You always play as a Belmont in the Castlevania game. It's pretty much tradition. I think there are a few rare exceptions, but you know you you play as uh, Belmont, but you have the aid of three uh, protagonists. There's Sypha, who is obviously a main character in the show. Alucard is another character that can assist you throughout the game. And there's a third character that assists you in that game who is named Grant, uh, Grant Dynasty. And uh, uh, until you know, through season three, uh, he had not appeared in the show at all. And through season four, he has still not appeared in the show at all. <laughs> However, there is a character in, you know, and this is this has been a source of a little bit of consternation, it seems like, for fans. Uh, there's a character that's introduced in Season 4. This isn't really a spoiler. Uh, her name is Greta, and and she is from a a town called Dynasty, uh, I believe. Yeah, so her yeah. name is Greta of Dynasty, which just sounds a lot like Grant Dynasty, or uh, Grant Dynasty, uh, however you pronounce it. And so fans were like, okay, this is clearly a reference you know, it's a character that is on the side of good. So it's just maybe they're just doing like a gender bent version of this. And so it's just kind of a cool riff on it. You know, that way we get our grants in the show. Um, one of the producers is just like, no, it's just a happy coincidence. And I'm like, I don't fucking believe you. I don't <laughs> fucking believe you, my good sir. So anyway, that's my fun fact is, hey, maybe it wasn't intentional, but it comes across as a reference to to that one character who has... Uh, not made the leap from from game to screen. Uh, Grant is a pirate, so you know that's a bit of a different kind of angle. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I have not played Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse. The show makes me want to go back. I think I talked ugh, a few episodes ago. I had just like on a whim started playing Castlevania, and then like the season date and trailer came out very shortly after. Uh, so I'm like halfway through Castlevania Two. Uh, which is which is which is a weird game. It's it's very different from like the traditional Castlevania formula. It's I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's more like it has like more RPG elements kind of infused in it. But and they um, eventually do go down that route. I know the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, were, yeah, were yeah. They, I mean, they they do change it up. But you know, I think the first one, I think the third one, the Super Castlevania, the Super Nintendo one, like Symphony of the Night. You know, they kind of have like a more traditional side-scrolling. Um, 
Metroidvania style approach. Uh, so anyway, that's what I got for fun facts. I just, I just, I'm just, I'm just playing loosey goosey and just throwing some, some information out there. So hopefully someone enjoyed that somewhere. I don't know what else to say. Um, that was pretty fucking fun, dude. I, I was right, totally well, thank into you. it. Ah, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I, I, I like the vote of confidence. Um, so, in the interest of getting Andrew to bed at a reasonable hour, I tried to, to cull the news to 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 just six uh, pieces um, for this episode. There's a lot more that has happened since we recorded last, but you know we don't want to be here for three four hours, and we absolutely could be. Do not doubt us for one second. You know, if you've listened to Is us, that before, a challenge? You know better. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's up to you. If you want, I mean, you know, if you want to stay up, be my guest. Um, but. Um, Six pieces of news, uh, four pieces of news news, and then two trailers to, to close it out. So I think we've got some good things to talk about. So we'll start with Batman because cause Batman's fucking cool and you just like to talk about Batman. Uh, and we're going to get a Batman animated series over at HBO Max and Cartoon Network courtesy of uh, Bruce Tim. Uh, who was the co-creator of the the Batman the animated series the you know the the classic animated series that everyone loves, uh, as well as J J Abrams and Matt Reeves those the, the those two will also be producing alongside Bruce Tim, so Batman animation and you've got three people who I think are pretty talented uh, and and at you know the things that they, they generally speaking work on. So it seems like a pretty good combination of things. What do you think? Are you up for a, a Batman animated series? God damn it. Yes. <laughs> he says as the camera <laughs> falls from its, its perch uh, atop the lightsaber help. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Uh, oh, God damn it. The cable's too fucking thick. It pulls it. <laughs> this is a fucking problem. All right. Uh, currently i'm just i don't even know what i'm looking at to be honest it's some sort of uh, wiring setup that i'm that i'm looking at but uh uh, let's see anyways batman animated series yes you in you're out i'm in i'm in uh i would be curious to see um what direction they go in you know what i mean like how is it animated uh i've seen a bunch of different styles of animation for batman so uh sure you make an animated thing. Animation is pretty importante, uh, and I would like to know how they're animating Batman, uh, and whether or not is it like the is it like the old one, or is it like Batman Beyond? What's it going to be like? You know what I mean? Yeah, I I I, I don't know. Um, I think they put out um, like a like a, a bit of promo art that that showed the character design of Batman. And he's basically sporting the original uh, uh, Bob Kane, Bill Finger design, where like he's you know the ears oh, are a bit got different. Some big like wings, yeah, okay, yeah. So, and I kind of like that. So that makes me feel like it's going to have like a weird old schooly type vibe. And I kind of I don't know, you know, like the the animated series had this very weird but unique kind of gothic universe that it had, and you know. It, I guess kind of similar to like how the Burton movies did it, but, but different. Like it felt like it felt unique. Like Gotham city felt like a very unique city that felt, you know, like, you know, like I, I just think that's something that the, the Nolan film struggled with is that Gotham city didn't feel unique. It just felt like, you know, Pittsburgh or wherever, or Chicago, you know, wherever it was filmed. And I feel like Gotham city is supposed to have the kind of this unique brand, unique identity. And, uh, I just feel like that little bit of promo art, we don't see much of, I guess, Gotham, but I just feel like that image of of Batman there just gives me some some hope that they're going to do something kind of cool with the animation style and, and, and bringing it to life. So Something a little bit that's different. My, it's, my, it's my two cents based off of the, the, the mostly nothing that we have to go off of. So um, I think it's exciting. I mean, you know, I'm curious to see, what, see where it goes. Um, probably something that... <sighs> Uh, I don't know when we're supposed to get it. I, I mean, I would presume probably next year at this point if they're just announcing it. But, you know, who knows? Sometimes sometimes I feel like, I you know, obviously we're talking about an animated show um, on this episode. And it really hasn't been that long since I feel like season three dropped of Castlevania. Maybe right. maybe maybe a year or so. But some, sometimes it just seems like the animated shows just churn out like episode after episode. And then other times they just take fucking forever. So I, I'll be curious, I guess, to see which 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 boat. Uh, this one falls in, so 
So yeah, that's what I got. You got any other thoughts on? Uh, apparently, it's going to be called Batman Caped Crusader. I completely <laughs> overlooked that. So Batman Caped <laughs> Crusader. What do you What do you think? You look you, you, any other yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I'm all in on that. I think it sounds good. In. Okay. All right. Well, moving on. Uh, we uh, <laughs> with our next piece of news, return to the Knives Out Two cast. Uh, as promised, we have. Uh, well, just just one more name to add to the very long list that I think we talked about on our last episode. So Kate Hudson is joining Daniel Craig and Company and the sequel to Knives Out uh, from director Ryan Johnson. Uh, as with you know the other names, we don't we don't know who anyone's playing. We don't know who done it yet. Um, but we know that Kate Hudson is is another suspect to add to the uh, long running ensemble cast uh, that that they've assembled uh, over at Netflix now. So Daniel Craig back, Catherine Hahn, Dave Bautista, Janelle Monae, Leslie Odom Jr., and Edward Norton also still on board for that. So Kate Hudson, what do you think? Yay or nay on that one? Yeah, <laughs> Kate Hudson's <laughs> uh, just totally fine. Whatever. Yeah, it's not. It's not a you know. Some of those names get you a little bit more hyped than others, is what you're saying. Yeah, and she's yeah. she's probably towards the bottom of the pile. Yeah, but I mean, no, if you're gonna have not, like not actively bad, but like, hey, okay, whatever, whatever, man. She's totally fine. She's totally cool. Totally fine. All right. Well, I'm sure next week or next episode, whenever that comes along, we'll have more knives out two casting for you because it's just it just and that's feels what like it's, it's just, about. It's just going to be a running thread. I mean, you can't more suspects all of them to the can't pile. be Anna de Armas. You know, I mean, they all can't yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's 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 tough. You know, who 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 can be? You know, maybe the cardboard cutout, but it's a fucking cardboard cut. I cannot believe that's a fucking thing. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? Uh, ben has moved on from from Anna, and and he's 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 back with J Lo these days. Did you hear about that shit? <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I saw that on a magazine in Blue Ridge. <laughs> fucking People magazines and uh, uh what. The Eternal herself on the cover of that poster, on the cover of the magazine said, I am no villain, or whatever it is. And they had, like, the what? quotes. Um, fucking, what's her face? Um, Angelina Jolie? Yeah, yeah, Angelina Jolie was on <laughs> okay. the fucking cover of that okay. thing, too. But she wasn't, uh, she was never with, the, what, what's his face? But anyways, fucking... <laughs> Yeah, we're we're we, we all know the hot goss on on Watch of Your Repeat. That's what we're here to talk. We've about. We've got the T. If yeah, that's yeah. what the kids say these days, <laughs> yeah. we've got the T. <laughs> we've got it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, I think I think the T is that Henry Cavill is is uh, on board to to headline something, and wouldn't you guess it? It's not another Superman film because who knows what WB's doing? Because Lionsgate's stepping in. They're bringing in Henry Cavill to to lead. Uh, a Highlander reboot. There can be um, there, only one. There can be only one, and it is Henry Cavill now. Fuck yeah, you're damn um, right. <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect casting. That's great. That's, that's pretty fucking good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know? I can picture him delivering that line like a badass. Yeah. He, well, he is. He's, he, he plays I am the badass. Highlander. <laughs> there can be only one. He kicks some ass with his fucking ghost boxing yeah. skills. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be uh you know it's it's a proper reboot. Um I feel like I feel like it's been a while since we've had a Highlander movie. Um I know the you know I've never even I've never even seen Highlander. Okay, I think the first one's the only one that's worth watching. I think there are many sequels, maybe a TV sequel or a series in there. Uh I think I think aside from the first one, you know, you can kind of just stick them in the bin, you know, if you know yeah. what I mean. Don't don't worry about them too too much. But uh, yeah, Henry Cavill's on board. He's playing. He's 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 the Highlander. Um, it's going to be from John Wick director Chad Stahelski, uh, and and he was the co-director of the first John Wick, and then he's also directed. He he was the the sole director on uh, John Wick chapter two and three. So holy shit! I think I think we're gonna get some fucking badass uh, action set pieces with this, and and Henry Henry Cavill's got the chops, you know. You know, we, we we saw him be a badass in The Witcher. He, he has the potential to be a good Superman, and for again, for some reason, WB doesn't want to let him be. So <laughs> fuck it, man. He's just gonna he's just gonna he's just gonna take on some more badass roles. And oh, and, and we can't forget about uh, you know the reloading fists and and Mission Impossible Fallout. You know the the classic and and the stash and everything. It's all good stuff, man. So it so is yeah, all good stuff. Uh yeah I, I I'm 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 very on board with this this sounds like a ton of fun so um yeah 
the choreography and sword play is going to be fucking nuts. Yes. And don't they jump through time or something in Highlander? Isn't that like a thing? Or are they immortal? I think they're immortal. I think, I don't know, it's, I mean, honestly, with the many sequels, TV series, etc., I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, but to my knowledge, I think it's just the immortality is kind of the more um, pertinent thing that's happening, so. Okay. I don't know, you know. Um, you know it. It, it, uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the first one in a long time, so, you know, I'd be, I'd be curious to, to, to revisit it um, See at some point, it but, up. yeah. You know, and, and I'll be curious to see what their approach is with this one. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm Maybe a little board, bonus so. episode, Highlander. Nice, simple thing. <laughs> yeah, just the first one. We'll just be like, yeah, we know there's like 900 fucking things, but like, who cares? Um, that'll be fun. Yeah, so anyway, that's what we got. Henry Cavill starring in Lionsgate's uh, Highlander reboot. Uh, look forward to that at some point in the future. Probably for a few years, probably a few years down the road. Holy uh, and, shit. And, 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 and turning our attention to, to uh, some more casting news, some uh, probably more out of left field casting news, I think, overall. This is a big one. Um, Timothy Chalamet is on board <laughs> to play the one and only Willy Wonka in the Fuck new yes. origin film uh, that we'll be getting it. Uh, we'll be getting from uh, Warner Brothers and the Rolled Doll Story Company, because of course there's a Rolled Doll Story Company. Um, yeah, Timmy. Timmy's Timmy's gonna be Willie. Timmy Willie. Timmy so, Willie. Uh, <laughs> Timmy, what are you, what are you, are you on board for some Timmy Willie? Yeah, I think that sounds cool. <laughs> I think that sounds. W- Anything's now, better you, than Johnny you, Depp. I was gonna, any- damn it. I'm supposed to make the joke. Do you think he's going to be as good as Johnny Depp? You know, so. Anything's better than Johnny Depp. Hardly anything is is, is going to beat fucking Gene Wilder. Um, right, yes. Yeah. So you got to operate in the middle ground. Like, and there's there's a big middle ground. There's a huge there. middle ground. What kind of film are you making? Are you making like a weird fucking low key horror movie? Like, uh, like the, the fucking. <laughs> Walder one because that one's creepy as shit. <laughs> that boat sequence. I mean, to be honest, so is the Johnny the fucking, Depp one. The fucking kids turning into blueberries, getting rolled away. I mean, the the whole thing is fucking bonkers. Oh man. Oh, what a movie! I like that shit. <laughs> I like Willy Wonka a whole lot. I I would be. Um, yeah, I'm in. What if they make it like a? They need to get Zack Snyder on board with this. Darken that shit up a little bit. <laughs> Zack Snyder directs Willy Wonka <laughs> journey into the chocolate factory. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think I need that. Uh, if, if I'm being entirely honest, I don't think I need that. You could have the, the the chocolate factory. You know, you can picture it in black and white, pumping out smoke. You know, and, and the Oompa Loompas <laughs> walking around the factory. It's all dystopian and shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I can I'm see sorry. it. That's a, that's a yeah, I mean, it's WB. WB Synergy is there, so it could happen. Uh, it probably won't, though. Here's here's another interesting thing about this. You know, I think, you know, much like the last one, the, 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 the director involvement is exciting. I think this is also true for this Willy Wonka project. Because, you know, to me, like on the face, I'm saying Willy Wonka origin film. No, thank you. Timmy's great. You know, Timothy Chalamet is, is he's great. You know, he's he's he's. He's doing great for himself. Um, you know, obviously we'll be seeing him in, in Dune uh, and, and just just a few hopefully short months. They'll probably be painfully long, but hopefully short months we'll be seeing him in Dune. Um, and uh, I just watched him recently in Little Women as well, which, which he was very, very, very good in. Um, this Willy Wonka origin film is, is going to be directed by Paul King. Probably not a name that you recognize, but he's the man responsible for directing Paddington 1 and Paddington 2. Which you know may not again mean a whole lot to you, but those films receive amazing reviews. And until I think a few days ago, Paddington Two was the highest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Jesus, and it just registered a negative review after I think yeah I'm looking it up. Two they had a 245 straight positive reviews, was sitting at 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and then some asshole had to ruin the fun for everyone and gave it a negative review because. Because he needed the clicks on his website would be my guess. Um, I haven't <laughs> seen Paddington One or Paddington Two, so I can't exactly say with any sort of certainty that these are just excellent films. But by all accounts, they by all accounts except for one, excuse me, it's they you know they seem to be excellent films. Uh, and so it feels like there's a bit of um, pedigree, you know, behind this Willy Wonka thing, which you know I think in lesser hands would just be like a 
okay, no, thank you. I don't need this. But that, that, you know, Timmy and a good director, I don't know, you know, Hey, you know, stranger things have happened. Maybe this could be something that's, that's, and it's a Willy Wonka and not just origin a, story. Uh, I, yeah, I, it, it's I, not just another adaptation, right? It's something different. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe. I don't know if it's maybe. something that I need with Willy Wonka. Right. There's there's a certain mystery to the character that's kind of, you know. Yeah, it's good. You part know, of the charm, but, maybe. But we'll, uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I'm just looking at a thumbnail of Johnny Depp and that. Yeah, it's fucking 2005 one. Really fucking bad. No, thank you. That's that's what we say. No, thank you too. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got a couple trailers to talk about. Uh, a couple good trailers to talk about. First one is for uh, I was going to say the next Marvel Studios film. That is still not correct. Black Widow is still not out. Uh, you heard it here first. Uh, it is uh, not even for the next film after that because Shang Chi is not out. It's for the third film uh, from Marvel Studios that will be coming out this year. It is Marvel Studios Eternals, uh, which will be debuting in theaters this November uh, with a very, very impressive cast. We got a two-minute and seven-second official teaser. Um, This is the one that's directed by Nomadland director Chloe Zhao, and I want to know what you thought about this teaser. This looks like an epic it does. It, looks, it does. It does. It feels like it's going to be epic. Yes. Yeah. Like it just. Um. It feels like a, a a grand movie. Like these people show up to Earth in their earliest stages, and they watch humanity grow. And you're just gonna you're gonna see how these people interact and everything with humanity. And they also the, one of the cool things is is the way they they seem like um. Um, the only thing I can think of is like they're alchemists, like they touch things and they it transmutates into different things, mm-hmm. which look yeah. which look pretty cool. Um, that that wiry metal stuff that that they're able to fucking generate or whatever. I don't know what any of this stuff is, um, but I'm really intrigued. Uh, very like I I. I expect uh, when we get a full trailer or whatever, whenever the the marketing marketing machine starts really steamroll and i think i'm probably end up going to be doing a uh, a deep dive in the eternals on the wikis uh to figure out what all the shit is uh because it looks it looks bonkers um i don't know what i don't know who the villain is i don't know i really don't know anything going into this at all i don't know and, who and, any and of the I, characters yeah are. yeah and I, I mean fair and i think that this I think this works well as a teaser because it doesn't give you all those answers. You know, it it, it uh, you know it says this this is going to be epic. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen. We don't really know what the thrust of the plot is particularly, but you know the imagery and just the promise of some grandeur is is kind of enough to hook you. I think, uh, and that's kind of how I think I felt about the teaser. Is just like, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm pretty well read in in, in comics lore. The Eternals are characters that blind I, spot. yeah, blind spot, yeah, for sure. Characters I don't really have a whole lot of knowledge about. So this is kind of a you know a blank slate for me in terms of like I don't know if Marvel Studios is going to adhere super closely to the comics or if they're just going to take inspiration and just kind of do their own thing. You know, so it's not going to upset me if they they find something. But I can tell you what I I I, I trust Kevin Feige and I trust Chloe Zhao. After yeah. you know what I've seen from them, and and what I see from this too. two minutes here, and, and that cast is just fucking stacked. You know, it's it's. I mean, it, <laughs> who isn't in a Marvel movie these days is kind of like you know like it's a harder question. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, they, this this is not a cast to scoff at. So we, we got we got we got some Game of Thrones alums in here too. So um, Jimmy Chan, Richard Madden, Kumail Nanjiani. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, Lauren Ridloff, um, Kent Harrington, Selma Hayek, and Angelina Jolie, who talked about that's earlier fucking... and talked about a lot on our last episode. Um, you know, that's that's uh, what the fuck Selma Hayek's that's... been in for the past twenty years. Uh, Ten years. She was she uh, she was in the Hitman's Bodyguard, uh, oh, and, okay. and and yeah. and, the, and I think the one. sequel that's about to come out. But I think yeah, you know, she she really. She really hasn't done a whole lot, has she? At least not a whole lot that we've seen, let's put it that way. But, you know, same thing with Angie. You know, she's been in a few projects here and there, but she's, I think, been pretty choosy. You know, obviously, like I said, we talked about her with those who wish me dead, but 
you know, this does. And she's got this... acting chops, right? Like, oh, yeah. She, yeah, she went, for sure. I mean, she goes a long time without acting. And you're like, hey, Angie's yeah. a part of it. Yeah. Oh, and it's got a, uh, it's got Don Lee, who's who's a, like one of the badasses in Train to Busan. Uh, um, it's the opening line for Train oh, to Busan yes. for for those uh, who 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 would not recall such a thing. You would only recall such a it. thing. I did see him. He was yep. holding hands with somebody or something, right? Yep. 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 That's the one. So. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I've the... seen the opening 300 times, like Andrew and I have, but. Um... <laughs> It's supposed to be a cast. Like, <laughs> people aren't supposed to remember the movie for Abu Ho. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even that know what it means. That was literally our 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 sinking sinking phrase. Is there <laughs> yeah. something wrong with the sink? Let's see if we can fix this. Abu Ho, Abu Ho, Abu Ho, over and over and over for two hours. <laughs> uh, anyways, it was Groundhog um, Day of of, of Train to Busan. <laughs> When we finally got in the movie, it was really good. Yeah, it was really, it was great. Um, but yeah, but this it, this Eternals, looks yeah. absolutely fucking incredible. I like yeah. that. I like that ship they're in too. Yeah, it's cool. It's very pointy. Very pointy, just made of like rock or some shit. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? I I don't know anything about that stuff. Looks yeah. really cool though. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, just the the costume design looks cool the the sets look great the scope and the scale of everything the cast the the, the direction the cinematography like it just i don't know I'm, it feels like something special is brewing over at marvel studios with this one i'm really curious it's the big thing for me with this one yeah if they were the shepherds of humanity which is the way they're portrayed in this teaser right they sure. they if they're the shepherds of humanity this has to be set be like during during the what phase three or whatever uh during thanos stuff they got to explain what the fuck they were doing is that, is that yeah yeah like why, why weren't they there this has to explain why th- this movie has yes to be I, I think that's why a pretty they weren't big present. question yeah they have to address being what, the role what, that this what, like what, sets them up to be in like, it's like why the fuck right. what, what, what'd you why bail out for like, why, right. why are you doing something now you know what what's what's the impetus for that uh and 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 why was thanos not enough. Now, did, did they get snapped? Did half a, the Eternals get snapped? Hey, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, I don't Thanos know. is Thanos is a an Eternal, right? But he was like the other. Yeah. he was like a rejected Eternal. Yeah, basically, it's uh, so. I and you no, know, and and I I don't know if they'll address that either. Is do they? You know, are they going to stick to the comics in, in that particular aspect? Because I think Thanos is an Eternal. He hails from the same planet, I think, as the Eternals. But he had like a recessive deviant gene like the deviants are like the bad guys the eternals are the good guys theoretically the, the deviants are the bad guys and he had some sort of recessive gene that made him you know into a purple raisin man and so he and was raisinette. rejected and ostracized <laughs> raisinette um from society so yeah i mean you know if they deal with that lineage maybe that explains like you know well we couldn't inter- intervene when it was one of our own or something i don't know i don't know you we'll know see. so we shall see. We'll see in November, uh, and I'm very excited. Uh, we'll obviously be getting more more trailers of this. Uh, hopefully, not Black Widow numbers of trailers, i.e., like 300, because it, you know, got delayed for 17 years. But um, I'm excited about it. I'm very excited about it. I'm looking forward to seeing it in November. Uh, and you know, it's, it's good. You know, we'll have a couple couple movies from Marvel Studios to entertain us up until then. Probably have a couple more TV shows to look forward to. Loki debuts in just a few days from when we're recording so you know it's just it's just all what? goodness for marvel studios this this year do what uh yeah yeah loki starts i think i think next week i think holy I think the shit ninth, oh. the 9th of june if i'm not mistaken it's yeah fucking, so. that's fucking wonderful it's wonderful i agree it's good stuff oh so. man all right <laughs> that, so, made my, yeah. that, made, that made my night <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, good stuff. Uh, all right, last trailer for the evening is for the next film from one Edgar Wright. It's called Last Night in Soho. It's coming to theaters in October. And uh, Edgar Wright, uh, never content to stay in one genre, has now shifted to uh, doing a psychological thriller, uh, which stars uh, Thomas and McKenzie and Anya Taylor Joy. Takes place in the 1960s in London. And uh, looks it looks like a doozy, I, I, I think. So, uh, what, what do you think? Yeah, looks fucking terrifying. Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I guess she's 
going to sleep and waking up in another person's body. Essentially yeah, that's what uh, it yeah. seems like. Uh, but then at the end, you got like like these creepy tall people like trying to bust through the windows and busting through the floor and shit. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, but it looks uh, Edgar Wright is a very talented individual. Um, Anya, I, I've always mispronounced her name. I've just picked up on a mispronunciation of mine. <laughs> Always called her Anna Taylor Joy. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. I see. Anya um, is a talented actress, and uh, I don't know. I don't recognize the other girl. The, the the you would recognize her as the girl from Jojo Rabbit. Oh, okay. The yeah. the uh, the girl that was in the closet, the Jew. Yes, the Jewish girl. Yes, that's gotcha. Correct. Um, yeah, yeah. She's totally awesome. She made me weep. So she's a good actress. I, I, I guess the bar's set quite low for people that make me weep, uh, but uh, she's definitely a good. She's definitely a good actress. So yes, I am very excited for this project. The trailer was very intriguing, very well made trailer. I like the neon. I like the the period piece. Um, I like that transition, um, and it looks uh, it looks incredibly interesting. Very excited about this one. Good pick for the for the news. That was a mm-hmm. good one to pick up on, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's got some horror vibes in it. You know, it felt uh, synergistic with talking about Castlevania, so I, I thought it'd be a good one to close out on. Um, and I, I think it looks looks great. It's just a very well-put-together teaser, you know? The, the art of the teaser, the art of the trailer, you know, I think is something that's often lost these days. I think I bemoaned that uh, p- probably even on our last episode. Um, but Marketing this, is a thing. You know? This is very stylish. Um very cool, you know, just the, the neon soaked vibes of it are awesome. Great, great two leading ladies to, you know, and, and period piece. And Edgar Wright, you know, it's just fucking hell, dude. You know, just watched Scott Pilgrim the other day, and that is, you know, a film that a decade on is as stylish as ever and as, and, you know, enjoyable and as fun as ever. So I'm um, super, Driver. super stoked. Baby Driver. Yep. Another good one. I like how he infuses music and all his shit. Like, it's always... Yeah, yeah. He's very, he's very in tune. Uh, not No pun intended. Uh, but he's very in tune to... Uh, I don't know. He's just very in tune to the, to, to synchronate, synchronizing um, the, 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 the... I don't know. The, the beats of the movie or whatever. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Fuck. No, Anyways, I, I, moving on. I know what you're saying. <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway. Yes. Last night in Soho, October in theaters. Look forward to it. Like we are. Uh, moving on, uh, we move on to Castlevania season four, uh, and and uh, close out our coverage of, uh, I guess I guess all of uh, this iteration of Castlevania. I think uh, we talked about it. I think you know we alluded to it earlier. Uh, this is the final season of Castlevania as we know it. Um, the, the Netflix is reportedly going to be working on uh, like some other story of of castlevania that's not going to be you know it's going to be in the same same universe but different set of characters or something like that there's 800 belmonts to choose from so they'll just they'll just pick one out of the hat and then craft it around that would be my guess um they'll do it without warren ellis because as we've talked about uh dude's a piece of shit uh, did so, warren ellis uh, write these seasons he did he wrote he wrote I think every episode in seasons one through four. So it's unfortunate, you know, obviously we're, we're here talking about a work that is probably the last work that of, of his that will be made. Um, probably not ever because, 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 you know, but um, yeah, you know, it, 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 uh, it taints it a little bit. It's unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I think for the purposes of this episode, we're going to kind of just cast that to the side and just focus on, you know, you know, the content itself. You, I think we can separate it effectively enough to say this guy sucks, but we can still talk about a thing that is based on a video game. It is not wholly original. It's, you know, it's just taking certain things and he's doing cool things with it. And hey, you know, okay. You can hate the artist, but you don't have to hate the art. Is that right? I mean, yeah, that's basically. So, yes, yeah. I, I think that pretty much covers it. So, you know, I, I think it would be silly to, to obviously, you know, not mention you know th- that that little nugget, uh, and and I know we've talked about it before. You have so to I don't, know. I don't, I, you have you know. to know if you're watching a Kevin Spacey movie, you got to acknowledge Kevin Spacey's a fucking piece of shit, right? But Kevin exactly. Spacey can also act. He's just a fucking good actor. 
You know what Correct. I mean? That, you know, that's, 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 you know, uh, Warren Ellis can write some <laughs> shit. Doesn't mean he's not a piece of shit. Yes. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, talented people can be pieces of shit. It, it's, <laughs> it probably happens honestly more often the not. Than, than we would, than we would like to think. So, um, anyway, Castlevania season four is in a Netflix original series that was written by Warren Ellis, directed by Sam Dietz, who who seems to be a scholarly gentleman from from what I know. Um, I haven't looked him up, so so don't quote me on that. But he seems he seems to be just fine. Um, and it was developed by Adi Shankar, who you know again by all accounts seems seems to be very swell. So you know there are people on that work on this this show that are that, not that pieces are good. of shit, right? You know you know so um. There you have it. It's based on the Castlevania video game series, uh, as I as I mentioned at the top, principally Castlevania Three, also uh, Castlevania: Curse of Darkness, which was like a later 3D uh, game. Uh, very extensive voice cast of uh, Richard Armitage, James Callis, Graham McTavish, Alejandro Inoso, Emily Swallow, Theo James, Adita Combo McCormick, Jamie Murray, Jessica Brown Fendley, Bill Nye. Yasmin Almasri, Ivana Milachevic, Christine Adams, Marsha Thomason, and Malcolm McDowell. Uh, new edition for season four. So, season four uh, is uh, is about Trevor and Sypha heading to the city where the war with Dracula began. Uh, as Alucard finds new purpose beyond his castle. And when a new threat arises that's bigger than anything they've ever faced, the heroes have to band together once again to save humanity. So I think it's worth saying at the top, this is season four. We talked about seasons one through three on a single episode, episode 131. We talked about seasons one through three of Castlevania. I think that, you know, it's worth listening to that episode if you want to hear our, you know, full exhaustive coverage of uh, Castlevania. Um, and so, you know, now would be a good time to listen to that if you're, you know, curious about that. We'll still do non-spoilers for season four, of course, but, you know, we're we're, we're kind of coming off the backs of, you know, hashing it out, you know, pretty extensively, I think, over, over those first few seasons. So I think a lot of the things that we're going to talk about are things that we're going to have already talked about a little bit. Um, and, you know, we might be, you know referencing back to like, oh, I think I probably said this about season one, two or three. And so this is kind of the case for this, too. Um so yeah, I would recommend people check out uh, that episode if they haven't already. And if they have, then then great, you're exactly where you need to be. You're, you're ready to hear us uh, give our thoughts on season four of Castlevania, uh, and uh, and hopefully you're ready to hear what Andrew has to say about season four. So what do you have to say about season four of Castlevania? Does it live up to the standard that seasons one through three set? Really, two and three, one was like a fucking pilot split into four episodes, as we've talked about before. But you know. It was an effective pilot. It was a very effective pilot. It was. A, it was an effective pilot. It was just very. It was. It was. It was too short. That means it was effective. It was too short. You're like, well, where's the rest? That, that yes. was. That was one episode. What the fuck? Highly effective. Um. So season four. Season four lives up to the promise of seasons one through three. I would say. Um, I think that the animation is great as ever. Um, I think that the utilization of like one big thing in Castlevania is like the breadth of weapons and, and the way you use those weapons and stuff in the video games. Um, I think that, I think that's, uh, that, that this, this season of the show praises, like it, it lends, um, a lot of the stuff off the source material, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and, it's brutal. Um, it's, yes. uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's super brutal. Um, it's pretty fucking cool. I, I think it's really cool. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, my webcam's acting up so you can't see my face or nothing, but I promise you. Okay. It's, I'm, it's, I'm sure you're, you're giving me expressions that, 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 you know, pr- well, it's, it's some it's, cool, it's, some it's, cool it's, shit, some pretty cool some, shit, man. Exactly. Um, and, uh, this season actually made me cry. Oh, 
season made me a little teary. Waterworks, okay, okay. Not the waterworks, I would not, say. Not full, just just a little little weepy, just a little weepy. Little weepy, yeah, little like weepy. Sheaf as he's his little little uh, blood My, tears coming out in Casino Royale, like a little bit, like like you need a little yeah, bit, a little dab, like a little it's dab. Just, it's just, just enough, a, just a little yeah. bit of emotion coming to the surface. Okay, that's okay. it. Um, yeah, a single tear out of my lazy eye. Lazy eye tears up a little bit more than my good eye. But yeah, there was a, there was a single tear that rolled down my cheek. Um, and it, it is good. It, it's very fucking good. I really like the season. I think the stakes were really high. Are, I don't know if they were higher than they've ever been, but mm. it certainly seemed like they were higher than they've ever been. Um, and uh, the twist at the end was fucking cool. I really enjoyed that twist at the end. Yeah. Um, and um, Alucard's a badass. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Belmont is a badass. Trevor Belmont. And... Sypha? Uh, Sypha. Sypha is a badass. Uh, also... Bunch of badasses. Yeah, you know. bunch of badasses. Get, 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 where's Henry Cavill? Bring him in. You know? um, Make him the face? next... Make Henry Cavill the next Belmont for the next series. That's I'm just throwing it out there, Netflix. <laughs> I'm just um, saying. I mean, it would be good. He would be good. Oh, what's his fuck? What's her name? What's her name? Um, the chick from the village. She's a badass. Oh, too. Gr- uh, Greta. Greta. Gr- yeah, yeah, Greta's a badass too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it, it it it's just a really cool show. You know, it's it's short. It's sweet. There is no, I mean, I guess there's a lot of reasons like why you would not recommend somebody want to watch this if the, you know, if you know that what they're into or what they're not into. Um, Sarah frequently called this season my Dragon Ball Z shit. Um, <laughs> are you gonna go in there and watch that Dragon Ball Z shit? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go in there and watch. It's really fucking cool. <laughs> it does. It does have some Dragon Ball Z esque sequences at times. I think. <laughs> It does. Uh, so that's, that's what Sarah called it. Um, but yeah, man, it was really cool. Uh, I finished the season in Blue Ridge. Um, nice. I sat up on the top stairs after I rode my dirt bike all day and, 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 and took a shower and I laid on the couch because I had downloaded it because I prepared to watch it on the flight. Um, mm-hmm. And I ended up working, a project, working on a project that I'll tell you about in the catching up section um, on the flight. But... Uh, yeah. Anyways, I I rode the dirt bikes and I I took my shower and I watched uh I watched the last three episodes, and um, if this was all we got from Castlevania, I would feel full. You know, I would feel I would feel satisfied. Um, the fact that they're doing more with a different thing feels right as well. If you're just gonna mm-hmm. like reboot it or go in a different direction or whatever, that feels appropriate. I feel like they wrapped up this like this arc i feel like they wrapped it up effectively um and uh the score was cool the animation was cool the voice acting was great uh it was written well um i uh i thoroughly enjoyed the season high praise from me uh yeah i i i will i will also give castlevania season four uh high praise it's just fucking cool you know i think i think when it comes down to it it, you know, <laughs> I think this is something that we we probably said uh, many times on our previous coverage of of Castlevania. Is it's just it's just a fucking cool show. Um, the characters are cool; they're all badasses. Everyone's a badass. The villains are badass. The heroes are badass. They do cool shit. Cool shit happens in every episode. <laughs> the dialogue's fucking cool. You know, they say cool shit to one another. You know, you know, it it, it feels kind of. <laughs> scripted and and punchy and you know in a very specific and targeted way um but it's all just really fucking cool now is it fucking cool for everyone no probably not probably not but for you and i absolutely it 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 hits the mark and then some i think um and i think season four uh i think i think you, you you talked about it a little bit i think one of our concerns especially in the wake of okay Warren Ellis is off the show after this fair, whatever. Is it going to feel like a weird, you know, like change, change, you know, change. Like, is it going to feel like he's setting up a bunch of story threads and then, you know, they're going to have to just cancel the show and it's going to be left, you know, with a bunch of loose ends or are they going to switch and have different people come on board and try to finish it? And it's going to 
feel like someone different is trying to do something. Uh, and, and, and none of that's the case. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, a new iteration of Castlevania with a different voice. I think that could be very, very cool. Again, with Henry Cavill providing a voice would be very, very cool. Um, but I think that this who really voiced feel Trevor like Belmont. It's uh, it's it's Richard Armitage who uh, was um, the main the main dwarf in in the in the Hobbit films. Um, okay, my mind's fucking blanking on uh, on the character uh, Thorin Thorin Oakenshield Thorin okay. Oakenshield yep, is, is who you. voiced. Um, so I, I think that's that's kind of like his biggest his biggest uh, role, um, but. Um, yeah, this this to me, this this felt like a a a a a, um, a a a a an end. It felt like an end to the series. It felt like an end for the characters. Everyone got kind of a storyline wrapped up. I really don't think it, it. You know, it really didn't. It didn't leave a whole lot of balls in the air. I don't really think. Uh, and so it kind of felt like, you know, when when it you know when it got to the, you know, the end credits of the last episode, I, I felt satisfied. Um, you know, by by kind of really everything that it brought, and it really felt like it almost even brought the series full circle. Like obviously, there's a lot of you know internal stuff to this season that it kind of wraps up. But I think that more broadly, it just felt like you know like a really nice way to end the series. And uh, so you know, top to bottom, you know, I, I'm I'm sure I recommended the series before, but season four is just kind of the nice uh, cap to to all of it, and just just really well done. The animation's great. Um, you know the the action, particularly the way they animate those action uh, set pieces. You know you can always kind of follow what's happening. It's obviously very visceral and bloody and gory, and you know sometimes it's a little, <laughs> sometimes it's a little much. I'll, like I'll, that I'll cat say. ass in my face, like that. Did you see that? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> like having a cat ass in your face. Uh, no one likes that. You know what I mean? It's not good for anyone. Um, but uh, I would ask the viewers this, or not the viewers, the listeners, <laughs> the listeners. Well, you know, <laughs> they might be viewing on YouTube potentially just the the, the thumbnail of the episode. <laughs> but it. is Bill Nye attached? Uh, yes, like picture like one of those things. Is Bill Nye attached to the project? Yes. Do you watch? <laughs> Yes. Yes, that's, that's your flow chart. Yeah, it's my flow chart. Bill Nye's on it. I'm in. I'm fucking in. Bill Nye's fucking... He... God damn, he's got the coolest voice. Also... He does. Sh- shout out to James Callis as Alucard. I didn't know who voiced Alucard until I just Googled it. Mm-hmm. He is ridiculous as Alucard. I, I think he's got one of the coolest voices in the show. Fucking Alec Hart. I think I think he's I think he's one of the few that's actually principally a voice actor, and like obviously you can tell why. Because um, yeah, all around fantastic, so good. All, I, I I think they're all fantastic. That's I, I don't true. Think there's a weak link in the there bunch. isn't. I mean they're... yeah, you know like you know, and I think I think what it is again is like all these characters are just they're just fucking badasses and like they're also interesting like, it's, and it's, cool. They're interesting. You know the stories are all really cool. This one has. I, I I love the thrust the 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 whole thrust of this one. You know, I guess spoilers for seasons one through three. Why are you listening to this right now? If a you haven't seen that, or b you don't care, in which case, fair. Hey, we appreciate your support and you're listening to us. Great. You know, Castlevania is not a show for everyone, but if you can just you know brute force your way through us talking about it, hey, you know, maybe 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 that's a better way than actually experiencing it yourself. But um, you know, most of this season is like we got to find a way to bring Dracula back. That's that's the whole like thing, right? I just think it's such a it's it's so perfect. Like Dracula fucking comes back in every goddamn Castlevania game. It felt like an obvious way that it was going. I think the way they went about that was just really really interesting. Really not what I expected, but really really cool. Um and 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 uh exciting. And then you you know you you know you have kind of the to the backdrop of that, you have you know the dynamics between characters like Carmilla, who is this you know vampirist who is out to to take over the world basically, and like her ambitions, and it's all just very cool. And then you know I, I don't know, we'll talk obviously the the spoiler the the, the story specifics and spoilers, um, but I just liked the scope of all of it, and I liked kind of the angle they took with all of it. I just thought it was really 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 cool really fucking cool yeah it's really you know? cool <laughs> i keep coming back to it i'm like you know i don't have a better word to really describe it it really just comes back to the the the, the coolness of everything and it's just it's a it's a show that exudes cool it, it you know 
I guess maybe it could come across as edgy, but like, I don't know. It feels like it pulls it off. And I, and, and I think a credit, I guess to circle back to what we were talking about, I think a credit is owed to the voice cast for selling it. You know, Richard Armitage is just, you know, he's, uh, I'm just interested. I'm a badass. You know, like, yeah, he is. He, you are a badass. <laughs> like, and, and, and every character just has, you know, their own kind of cadence and, 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 um, thing. And, 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 and it feels believable. It feels authentic. Like there's not, there's really not a weak link. Like I, I could shout out like all everyone of them for nailing their roles. Um, so yeah. And, and the newcomer, Malcolm McDowell is a newcomer. He's fucking funny, you know, in this one he's, <laughs> yeah. he's good. So ridiculous over the top. Yeah. You know, I love that. We had God brand and, and one of the other seasons, oh, I'm God brand, you know, it, it got some vibes there, yeah. but you know, you know, just, just fun. It's fun. It's good. It's cool. Um, animation's top notch. It's, 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 you know, it's exactly what seasons one through three were if, if you had the chance to, to watch those. Um, but it takes the story into, to cool, interesting new directions and it wraps up in a satisfying fashion. And I, I don't think I could have asked for more out of the season, to be honest. Um, so, you know, I guess I think my, I think my one qualm, I guess, with, with this season particularly, and, and I, I can't remember if it was true of the, the other ones. I think it's a bit slow in the first half, but once it gets going, it's yeah. nonstop. No, that's fair. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of building, building and building. And I will say shit hits the fan a lot earlier than I expected. Um, I think, like, episode six is just, like, an all-out, like, holy shit. holy shit kind of episode, and then it kind of doesn't really stop for basically most of the rest of the season. It's really just kind of, you know... I know that happened just, with just, season just going, going, uh, going. three. Season three, might maybe it was similar, just kind of a lot of setup, and then then it was like, oh, oh okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, you know, so. you know, but as they introduced more characters, I would argue that it's almost mandatory that you have that setup, almost, you know? Right, you, you got you to gotta put the, the, the pieces on the board, and then yeah. you can... Yeah, you got to let the dominoes you know, have fall. Have your turn, you know? Exactly. Yeah, um, so... So yeah, no, but I I do I do I do understand what you're saying. It is it, it it's a slow it's a slow build in the beginning. So yeah, and a lot of just long, drawn out scenes of dialogue, you know, and like you know scenes that are content to just be dialogue and like talk about like you know there's like a like uh I like as an example, not a spoiler really. Isaac has like this kind of long conversation with one of his night creatures, just kind of about like what he's thinking and what his motivations and plans are, and it's like. Most most things are, are very quick to jump to point A to point B to point C. This was a show that's like, we're just going to spend six minutes on a conversation. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of just back and forth between characters, just kind of really talking through like what's going on, you know, like, and, and it, you know, I think, I think what makes it a little wonky at least is like, you know, something like episode one starts with like a kind of a montage type feel and it feels like very action oriented and then it very really much slows down. And then it, and then once it gets back to being action oriented, it's very much just a lot of forward momentum with how the show um, progresses. So I don't know, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all kind of it, you know, and I enjoy the dialogue. I think it's well written and I think it's well performed and it's just one of those things where like, you know, I think there's enough in every episode to to not make it feel like a drag at any point. It's just one of those things just like, okay, where's this going? Where's this going? And then when you find out where it's going and then you see where it goes, you're just like, okay. I'm okay. okay. I understand. All right. Me. All right. Okay. I see you. You know, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I, I uh, High praise. High praise is, is, is where I end up with Castlevania Season 4. So uh, you want to jump in a recommendation? Yeah. Well, let's jump into it. Let's do it. Um Five tiered scale for our recommendation. Uh, very yes at the top, followed by yes, then totally fine, then fine, and then shit house. Um, I think, you know, I think with the obvious caveat of this is not a show for everyone, aka, you will probably know if this is a show for you or not. <laughs> I think assuming that, assuming that, I think, I think objectively speaking, I think for what the show strives to be, I think it's a very yes show. Would you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. And I think you'll know whether or not you're predisposed to liking it based off of a trailer. Yes. I like think a trailer if, would be if, a do if you, it, you know, if you, yeah. if you watch a trailer and you say, that might be something I'm interested in, take the dive. You know, every, you every, think, every <laughs> that's season. Some, that's some Dragon Ball Z shit. Might not be for you. Hard no. Don't watch <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> hard no. But if you're, if you're thinking about it, like, yeah, 
maybe. Then yeah, just just pl- press play on the Netflix because you'll thoroughly enjoy all the moments. It's very it's a it's a man looking back through the journeys of season one through four. Uh, it's a it's 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 top tier animated shit. You know, it but is. you have it's, to it's you good. have to you have to like animated shit. So if you don't like whether the art style or you don't like the visceral nature of it or whatever it, it's 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 a niche thing it's niche entertainment so whether or not you know you'll know very quickly by watching a trailer whether or not you're into it or not if you're questioning whether or not you're into it like if you think that you could be into it i would say watch it and i think you'll thoroughly enjoy it because it is a very yes show for me yeah, um, and, and especially given that you can get through season one in a span of like an hour and 20 minutes if that you know what i mean that's right it's a it's a snappy watch. I think it's enough to suck you in, and then season two really ups the ante in a big way, and and season three is like fallout of season two, and then season four is, I guess, picking back up and and wrapping things up. You know, from season three, um, it all it all it all works really well it's together. A, it's, I think. it's a I think pretty it's tight a complete package. It's of... it's great. Yeah, and it's really still not that long. Four seasons might sound like a lot, but you've got. Four episodes, eight episodes, ten episodes, ten episodes of each like twenty to thirty minutes, somewhere in that range. Yeah. So yeah, you, I mean, can you can fly through this stuff if exactly. you really want to. Um, it's a it's a real breezy it's a real breezy watch. Even if you wanted to, if you, even if you wanted to grind it out, it's super breezy. Yeah. Um, and it, I would argue that you won't want to put it down. Like if I got into it from season, if I got into it from season one and had the opportunity to watch all four seasons. I guarantee you I would grind it out. Like it would it wouldn't for it sure. wouldn't stop. It would be it would be done and over within a week. Yeah. Um it's I mean, it's, I think I think I think a lot of episodes kind of just you know, work right into another one. You know, I, I think well, mostly out of necessity because I knew we were recording, but I watched the last four episodes today. Yeah, you did the same thing I did pretty much. But honestly they just kind of like they just kinda of like flowed right into one into the other. It didn't feel like, oh, I need a, I need an hour to process that. It was just like, what's next? What's next? You know, and sometimes yeah. it was even like in the middle of like a battle. It was just like eh, we hit our twenty five right minutes. We gotta we gotta press pause there and we'll come back and see what happens, you know, on, on the next episode. It's like, oh, I can just hit the next button, we're good. So It's a glorious thing. Very glorious. Uh so yeah, uh I think I think consensus very yes for Castlevania season four. Uh, for the series, I think overall as well, I, I think there are not really any dips from season to season. I think it's very consistent throughout and it's breezy and enjoyable that it, it, it's a very tight package, I think, as you said. So, so yeah, uh, well, let's do it. Let's talk some full spoilers for Castlevania season four. Um, let's, let's get into the nitty gritty of what went down in this fucking season. Cause some shit went fucking down. I'll tell you that. Fucking Barney is death. <laughs> a fucking Barney. Of the most obnoxious person ends up being the fucking <laughs> the biggest. Didn't see that one coming? No, death. And he was the he was the he was the chick inside the uh, inside mm. the infinite corridor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I enjoyed the whole arc of of watching uh, uh, Saint Germain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Saint Germain. Just, like, just losing it, man. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to do what I need to get her back. I don't give a shit about anything. We're just going to do it all. <laughs> Until death pops up before him and he's just like, he's like oh, uh, I, I think I might up. be having some second thoughts about this whole situation. <laughs> <I> fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. man. And you are uh, correct. I mean, and Bill Nye is he, he, he. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't even pretend to imitate his voice. But just something about it is just so satisfying to listen to. And and it's a little unfortunate, you know, in some ways. Like I think Saint Germain was, like a, he was a he was a character very much on the side of good in season three. He was very entertaining. Here he was still very entertaining, but like also like he wants to bring Dracula back, and like that's that's probably no good, bro. So it was kind of like okay, like what's what's his he's, deal? You know, he's the villain that he's the troubled villain he's not like straight mm-hmm. up like he's not he's, evil he's not he's not he's not carmilla he's not no. he's not fucking varney you know or death i guess death's just like i'm hungry man give me give me some snacks i want some That's snacks it. i want to feel full forever <laughs> you know if like oh man death 
Like that's that your was, villain. That was so your awful. villain is fucking death. I want to be full forever. I was born here and I was born hungry. I want to be full forever. Oh man. That's fucking I, so, cool. That's so it's, cool. It's fucking cool. Yeah, he bit I mean, that he is... bit that key and he got enormous because he ate all the souls that were in that key. Mm-hmm. Oh man. And then he stabs him in the fucking forehead with that that suicide knife or whatever the fuck it was i don't Who even knows, know what the man. fuck was going on i don't even I don't know, know either but it's just badass <laughs> i'm like that's some, that's some cool shit it's like some sort of line in like the next episode just like so what the fuck was up with that shit dude he's like i don't know man i just put it together and stabbed him in the head i thought i was gonna die i read it about yeah. it in a book i read about it in a book as a suicide <laughs> knife you knew it would kill you yeah but it's just what i had to do <laughs> it's yeah. fucking cool yeah. all right dude it's i buy stuff. it Comes right yeah. in the horse. Oh man, the biggest thing. I'm gonna name the town Belmont. I'm is that is that town. what elicited the tear? Oh is that man, what, is that when it happened? What's the name of your town gonna be? Belmont. It's like oh fuck oh, and it's like a it's such a cool delivery come because it's coming from Alucard and Alucard mm-hmm. is the one delivering the tears, you know. And it's like oh man, Alucard, you've done too much. <laughs> I, I, I I will say they got me. I definitely thought Trevor was dead at the end. Uh, yeah, so did I, of course. They could have they could have been done with it. I, yeah. I just thought it was like, you know, it makes sense. Like, okay, the Belmont line will pass on, Saif is pregnant, okay, you know, it's a it's a kind of a bittersweet ending. Um, you know, the world would be better, but it will be a world without Trevor Belmont. But uh, alas, he, he made it to the end. Good on him. And they bettered the world. San, San Germain found a little bit of humanity left. I think it was, was that kind of the explanation as he transported them into the corridor and, and, and kind of dumped them somewhere with like the last like little bit that he could do. And that kind I of think what so. It was. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. That 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 ending was like ice on, icing on the cake. Like, it was awesome. They, just oh, the, the so scale, good. the scope of it was just fucking cool. Yeah, and the the death design was very awesome. The twist obviously was good. You no, know, it, it didn't see it coming. Obviously, I, I mean, I fully expected that Dracula would just be the big bad. I thought they would bring him back, and uh, that's they bring what it would back. be. And they do bring him back in and a couple know different Dracula's, ways. And Dracula says, <laughs> "I'm good. You know, I we got, got second I got my chance." Ladies. I got my lady, you know, we're not going to we're not going to go see Alucard. We're, let's just go and be by ourselves and enjoy our life. Yeah, Dracula getting kind of a happy ending. I, I wasn't really expecting because that. Because Dracula I, was much in the same as St. Germain. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I guess a little bit different, you know, like St. Germain just says, I'm just going to I'm going to kill whoever I need to kill in order to get get back the the woman I love, you know, whereas I'm going to shit on the entire earth because y'all killed the woman I love. Right. Y- you know, um, it's uh man. I mean, I think, I think, that, I think, I think especially that ending, you know, with, with, uh, with uh, Vlad and, 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 and Lisa was, was just really good because it felt like that was kind of the way it wrapped up the series. You know, I think the series really started with their relationship being the core and like what that, you know, basically, the you know the humans being fucking assholes that they are killing Lisa basically sets everything it's so into compelling. motion. It's yeah. so compelling. Like yeah. you know, there's somebody that's different, and we're gonna shit on them, and and these are the repercussions that happen because we shit on that one person. You know, it's right. like ah, oh, like that's like I, you, know, if it's not Camilla. Or whoever, you know, just like world dominating pieces of shit. Like I can understand Dracula. I can I can I can I can understand Saint Germain to a certain extent. You know what I mean? Uh right. you know, it, it it's they're 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 very compelling characters. I think they're well and even even Alucard, you know, I think Alucard was great, especially like from his intro and in what season two is when he gets betrayed by those people. I think season season three is like when they like come to his castle and like oh, is that having a relic three? and good time, yeah. And then they betray him at the end and try to kill him, and he's just like, okay, on a, onto a spike, you both go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I think every character through and through is super compelling. Yeah, you, definitely. Uh, they're all complicated. You know, they 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 are complex. They feel, they you know they 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 feel fleshed out in a way that most. I don't know. I think a lot of, you know, not to this extent, like maybe you get one or two characters that really get kind of fleshed out, but it feels like there's a lot 
going on here. There's and, a lot of characters. Kind of There's a lot of characters, and each 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 character feels like you can you can identify with each particular character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you you get where everyone's coming from, even if you don't totally agree with obviously what they're yeah. doing. You know, even even death is just like I was born to do one thing. I am putting a plan into motion that will feed me as many you know souls or whatever as possible, so that I will never go hungry again. It's like it's pretty rational if you're death. You know, pretty yeah, rational. I, I'm not I'm sense. not sympathetic. We can stick a sword in your head. That's fine. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> you we don't know. have to sympathize with your, what, your, what your plight is like. But like, I get you. I understand. <laughs> but I understand like why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, but I think what and I think almost think what's what's interesting about this is the way that the show kind of branched off into a few different directions. Like obviously Trevor and Sypha obviously are kind of like they're they're kind of a tandem, right? You know, they're 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 partners. Um, they're lovers. They, they kind of stick together that, you know, every kind of season has them together. Alucard has been kind of off on his own a bit, you know, most of, most of, well, all of last season, then most of this season. And then they kind of converge again, which was really nice, you know, kind of a moment when, when, um, Trevor and Sypha show back up in Dracula's castle and, and kind of team up and just, you know, have some more badass annihilate, sequences. Annihilate, just, just an annihilate an entire people. fucking army. Yeah. Just badass stuff, man. Um, but I think on the other side of that is you have a lot of you have these storylines with Isaac and Hector and Carmilla and Lenore, which really don't ever actually go back and intersect with the other stuff for the most part. Like um, like Isaac has a little bit to do with like the resurrection, like he's in league, I think, with Varney and Saint and Saint Germain. But for the most part, that's all kind of bifurcated from everything else, but it's still also compelling. And I think that's what's really interesting about this show is it's like main character is Trevor Belmont, but like also it's like kind of everyone else too. Like everyone is kind of their own main character in a way. Yeah, it's a and Game I of Thrones that, situations. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's 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 very much an ensemble, and I think that it's an ensemble that does a lot of justice. So unlike Game of Thrones, this show knew how to fucking take these characters to their conclusions because I think that the way that... I mean, I mean, Trevor and Sypha had a great ending, I think, for sure. Um, you know, putting them back to, you know, keeping them together was great. I think even if Trevor had died, I would have been satisfied with it. But bringing them back is like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to complain, you know? A, a character That's alike cool who's too. good, you know, keep him around. I'm, I'm good with that. He's been through hell and back, and almost literally, but not quite. Um, Alucard, obviously, <laughs> is, 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 a, is in a much better place, right? You know what I mean? Like, obviously, yeah. he's wary of humans and wary of strangers and now he's building the town of belmont and he's, he's 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 got a lady friend himself maybe you know you know he's working Even, on he seems, uh, he seems the, to be trying to impress her so you got the uh you got the two the two uh the two night creature guys what are they called uh isaac and hector the the, the forge masters the forge masters yeah you got the two forge yeah. masters you got one who's like hey listen you know rather than like he completely transitioned I mean, he mm-hmm. he went from I want to con. I, he did say conquest, like he wants to conquest everything. But at the same time, I want to I want to I want to I want to give humanity the tools they need to 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 press forward. You know what I mean? Right. We can create yeah. something. Um, and I actually enjoyed that bit with him talking to the night creature because then I, you get- I, I I I I don't I don't know if it was unclear. I I did enjoy it for the record. But you know, it, it was just one of those things. It's just like this is the show that's just content to yeah sit in this conversation for a long time, and, and then not. I think that's be I too think worried that's, about uh, to the praise of the show moving forward. I guess. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great character development. That's what makes all the characters so full. You know, it makes them yeah. it makes them. Uh, you can see, you can see. Uh, it's not Hector. It's uh, Isaac. You can see mm-hmm. Isaac thinking through. The things he was predisposed to and growing as a character on screen, right. and I think that's really cool. Um, Isaac, Isaac and Lenore's relationship was super interesting. Um, I thought I thought it was super compelling uh, because you know because those two should not be together for a number of different reasons, and and you know Lenore put him in a cage, right, and, and he escapes it and. He in turn kind of puts her in a cage, and well, she escapes it in a different manner. Uh, but it was it was it was real uh, majestic. 
Lenore was I, I enjoyed Lenore as a character. I think she was really great. Um uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think I mean I, I like Hector in, in the in the first place. I think he's enjoyable. You know, it was kinda obviously his his uh torment that he went through in, in, in season three was was pretty hard to watch. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it it felt a little weird, I think, like the season, like they, they were in a much more um platonic situation i guess than i thought they would be like i really thought that Hector. i mean obviously hector was 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 still very much ready to be like actually i'm going to do things for my own end i'm going to bring dracula back because i feel like i failed him uh i want to save you because i still like you but like you know it just kind of felt like that character is someone who could have just been like actually you tricked me fuck you i have this thing on my finger that makes me basically a slave to you like i felt like they were on pretty good terms all things considered um but uh, yeah. I, I think the relationship, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's I don't know if it's a bit of a Stockholm syndrome esque relationship. You know, you know, they're they're he's a little okay with his captor, but I think that you get more shades to Lenore, especially as Carmilla is kind of like off, like fucking losing it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> evil old men, evil old men, evil old men. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take over the world, and 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 uh, and Lenore is over here just being like, mm, do we need to? You know, like <laughs> yeah, is that, and that is was that a necessary? conversation between the uh, the two the two vampires, yeah, the other two, right? Uh, uh, was it Striga and and Morana, um, who were yeah. kind of just like, what, like, what, like, what, why are we off doing this shit? Um, I did enjoy like the last time we saw those two. They're just like they like they they were coming back to like the castle as it's getting just raided by Isaac, and they're just like, mm, peace, we're good. We'll just do our own thing. We got each other. We're okay. Um, I did enjoy getting to this coffin while I put on this fucking ridiculous oh, day armor. Dude, and that annihilate was sick. a bunch of fucking farmers. And then she gets back and she's like, I just annihilated a bunch of fucking farmers. They were just they were just normal people. I don't feel good about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's a little, it's a little she, bit a <laughs> little bit Anakin and the Tuscan Raiders ask you might say. Just totally fucking annihilated everybody with that fucking giant ass sword. <laughs> the <And> sword, <laughs> the, the, the armor, armor was just fucking badass. Oh man, I tell you what, I mean, <laughs> maybe, so maybe, cool. we're, maybe maybe we're just jumping around a bit here, but we, uh, that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't think there's an action set piece in this that did not dis that that did disappoint. There, well, I don't know what I'm saying. None of them disappointed is what I'm saying. They did not disappoint is also what I'm saying. So yes. I think I got that right. I mean, and like like I said, I think almost every episode had something in it. You know, like the first episode is, I guess, what? Maybe like some montage of Trevor and Sy- Sypha kicking ass. And Sypha's powers are just fucking ridiculous. I thought it was just fire and ice. And then she starts electrocuting fuels, you know, fools later on in, in, in the yeah. season. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> fine. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's do it. Um I don't. I, uh, I'm trying to think. Like episode three, I think is the one where the the day armor stuff has happened. Uh, just fucking cool. Just fucking cool. Um, the whip. The whip is so. The whip cool. is just badass. I love when he even just like swings around and like traverses with it. Just you know, that's obviously very video gamey and yeah, and the know, trees. But, yeah, yeah, it's just just cool. swinging from tree to tree, and then and then that thing where he powered it up at the end, like to to fuck what's his face up to death. Fuck death up. I, what's his face? I called death. What's his face? Anyways, he's swinging <laughs> around that thing and, and fucking Vani. Yeah, just, <laughs> just fucking yeah. slinging it around. Yeah, it's just so fucking cool. fire whip. Just oh, just going to town, man. That was great. Um, I th- I think I don't know if it was. What about the crazy dude? What about the crazy dude with all the people inside the the basement of the kingdom or whatever? Crazy dude, ba- what are we talking he's about? He's like, he's like, hey, listen, oh! we have this underground thing. Oh, the one with like the dead, the dead king and queen. They're just like, I oh, know they're gonna come back to life any any moment, any yeah. minute now. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Like, nah, dude, you've lost your fucking mind. He lost yeah. your marbles, dude. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Oh, oh, okay. All right, we're just gonna go now. <laughs> Yeah, get stabbed. He gets stabbed, and oh, that that with the the one vampire, the Russian vampire. Mm, yeah, 
I, I tell you what, there, there was like, there was like four, like, I think that is like, I don't even know who the fuck any of these people were, but they just had really cool designs. Like they were the ones like kind of like setting up on like the gears and shit in the castle and they like drop down and each one just has like some badass thing. Yeah. That, that they was do. cool as shit too. Yeah. That was just, this was cool. I don't know what's happening there. Um, but the I think, ones they were the ones that stitched together the fucking hermaphrodite body. Yeah. Well, which was, was fucking bonkers. In- that was insane. <laughs> and like like I, I, I almost thought it was like an I, I really fully truly thought that we were just gonna get evil Dracula and that's that's the end of the series and you know, they they defeat him and send him back to hell, whatever, but the way they were going about it was just like I guess I just thought they would just bring Dracula back back like normal and then he'd just be dracula again i'm like no we're gonna no bring back they need to have fucking super weird stitched together body and it's got male and female <laughs> body parts and he's gonna live in the same body as with with lisa and it's gonna torture him and turn him insane i'm like that's so that's, that's fucking dark dude like i mean it's death obviously <laughs> like you know that's kind of a shtick or whatever but i was just like this is this is this is pretty out there even i feel like for this show um <laughs> It was that was wild. That was wild. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that happened. That was wild. That's the kind of thing that you know. If you're not predisposed to the show already, I don't know if this is going to convince you. But so, yeah. how does the series end? Well, you have these people stitched together, male <laughs> and female bodies, and they try to trap the soul of a male and female inside the body. It's pretty wonky. It's pretty weird. <sighs> But then yeah. he throws the fucking cross blade or whatever the fuck that thing is. Yeah, it's a spinny thingy. It's spinny thingy, yeah. does it? Sure, it's in one of the games. Yeah, it is in one of the games. It's definitely one of the games. So is Holy Water, turning them into like... Holy, blue, holy Water, yep, yep, yep. The blue flames. Uh, it's just... Oh, man, it's so cool. It's so cool. Especially if you, like, have any exposure to the games. The games are great. Um, yeah. I, I have nothing else to say on it. It's so cool. Yeah. Cover I, I think. Yeah, I think they'll. I think. I just think the last thing that I would would bring up is, I think I mentioned. You know, the the show, uh, the the shit hit the fans sooner than I expected, and that was because that was when episode six Isaac's just like, I'm just gonna drop in on Styria and just absolutely fucking wreck. Uh, Carmilla and her castle with 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 my night creatures. Oh yeah, crazy. and they had the whole blood fight, and that whole fight was just like a pool of blood around. And Carmilla is just absolutely losing it. Her eyes turned fucking blood red, and she's just just I don't know that that was when I was just like, because like I think I think episodes one through five were really a lot of setup, a lot of kind of just building up, and then that's when like things happen, and I'm like, yeah, oh okay, okay, wait, you know that wait. was the okay moment. All right, all right. You know, it was just such a, it was a really, really cool uh, set piece, I think, overall. And I don't know, it's just the way that she was moving around. I loved, I like, you know, I know I, I mentioned it already, but like the way they animate them moving around, even Carmilla, the way she moved was just really yeah. interesting. Same thing with Alucard. The way that he moves around, the way the sword gets kind of directed and the shield and stuff, like the red blur. Yeah, it's so cool. You know, you get the sense that these are just like, you know, obviously otherworldly creatures just super powerful and just I don't know. I don't know how Belmont keeps up with just the whip. It must be a pretty good fucking whip. Scythe makes sense because she's got some crazy ass magic, but you know, these other cats, I don't know how they make do, but I don't know. It's just it's just cool, man. I, I could probably sit here all night talking about remember that part? It was really fucking cool, wasn't it? The yeah. one yeah, thing I can't let my brain always <laughs> goes back to Alucard. Like rising up, mm. yeah, like out of the coffin. Yes, yeah. it's so fucking cool. Yeah, that's. I think that might be my favorite moment out of the out of the entire series is Alucard rising up from the fucking coffin. You're like, holy shit, what's about to go down? He's got his floating sword and a shield. Mm-hmm. Ah, I think it's what season. I think that's the finale of season one. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's when they meet Alucard, yeah. Oh, so cool. So good. Yeah, I don't know what my favorite one would be. I don't know. That's that's a toughie. I haven't really thought about it, so I don't know. Think about that moment, though. Think about the moment when Alucard rises up. That's a fucking good moment. I'm not not disputing it. I don't know. I just kind of, I feel like it's got to be, I don't know. I think like the, I don't know. I think, I think, I think death turning into this, 
just that whole uh, probably episode eight or nine is just the biggest like holy shit moment for me just like death revealing himself and and then you know me i've been here forever they're bringing dracula back and then he turns into giant death and i'm like i'm just i don't know what's happening this is ridiculous (laughs) this is insane i really thought episode six was going to be that like with carmelo like going blood eyes i'm just like whoa you know and then then and then i think they can they kind of topped it towards the end so um i don't even know what like what my favorite season would be you know because they really do kind of they flow together really well like they you know like season two is obviously like big it's taken down dracula and it almost you know it's very climactic for that reason and season three is very much a response and like dealing with like well what now and then this one is just i don't know you know it's just kind of like oh where do you go from here and and it just totally made sense how they just moved from one thing to the other. So it's all just good. I'm not going to pick a favorite season. I don't even know why I brought it up. I just don't, I don't feel like doing it. I'm not going to answer the question. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's all fucking great and it's all fucking cool. It's all fucking cool, man. So that's what I got on Castlevania. Uh, any other thoughts for you uh, for the whole series? Season no. four. Looking forward to some more Castlevania universe goodness, maybe with uh, Henry Cavill, if if we can will that into existence. The will is there. Okay. Okay. Well, I look forward to more as well. And this might inspire me to play some more Castlevania. We'll see. Um, all right. Uh, do you want to do a little addition of the listener's corner? Absolutely. All right. We have something from Bruce Brown. My favorite part. Regular contributor to the listener's corner. We actually sent something in today of all days, so very fortuitous. Um, Most of this is actually pertaining to uh, the subject of our last episode, Those Who Wish Me Dead. There are some spoilers in this, so... Watch it first. Watch it first. Listen to our spoiler coverage. It'll cover kind of the same beats because it's kind of responding to what we were talking about. So, hey, you know, go watch it on HBO Max while it's still there if, if you so choose. Otherwise, you run the risk of spoilers. You have been warned. So those who wish me dead, he says, my rating, it was fine. It had no real point, nothing explained, no real explanation of who was chasing them or why. I think you touched on it, but I have to believe it was lost in translation from the book or edited out for some reason. And then he continues, so some explanations. She didn't fall out of the tower. It was a controlled jump using the rope to get down quickly, and the ground was really soft that she fell on. Okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. The bitch was out for she was out for hours. <laughs> she fucking broke her back. Her hands were her burnt. Hand, the, the rope burn, I feel like, is like, okay, well, she didn't do a very good control jump if that's the case. Or control jump is just a bad idea. And I guess it's like better than death, I guess, in a way. You know, like, all right, you get rope burned, you're going to fucking break some bones, but at least you're not dead from this fucking thing getting hit by lightning. But anyway, speaking of lightning, the scene where she and the kid took turns running through a field with her yelling down and then going back and forth was her expert ability to read the weather on display and avoid the lightning strikes like she did in the tower. Except she did get hit by lightning in the tower. Oh, and except for all this ridiculous running and dropping, she still got hit by lightning, and I have to say it was kind of funny. My immediate reaction was <laughs> WTF. You go through all this shit and manage to be in the one spot that actually gets hit by lightning. <laughs> she gets yeah. hit by lightning yeah. fucking twice. <laughs> Uh, finally he says I noticed the Tyler Perry vehicle was government plate glad they never explained anything at all it was fine it was not amazing totally fair for, totally yeah, fair totally reading fair. Yeah. you know uh, good assessment uh, yeah and two more things uh, Woman in the Window I think it's on Netflix uh, Amy Adams uh, Bruce Brown says stupid and pointless it just sucked the end was good by that I mean when the credits came on I liked that part because it was over classic joke classic joke gotcha it actually got me I was like oh the ending was oh I see I see what's happening here <laughs> and finally on the rocks which is a, I believe an Apple TV exclusive Apple TV plus exclusive whatever uh, wasn't bad had some funny parts Bill Murray is awesome so there you have it the listeners corner got got, got some got some uh, so got some goodies on there so if you want to be part of the next edition of the listeners corner send some thoughts to watch review repeat at gmail.com otherwise this is the part of the show where I ask Andrew what he's been up to so I um, was, I'll try my best to start in chronological order um, it's really a test wa- of the memory yeah it's a it's a real struggle um, I watched nobody. Oh, okay. You did uh, like a VOD at home, I assume. I did a VOD some, at home. Bob Odenkirk, John Wick-esque yep. goodness. Yep, maybe? yep, 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 yep. 
Uh, it was totally fine. It totally was whatever. Fun. Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't as good as John Wick. You could tell it was John Wick. The choreography was cool. There were some cool action sequences, uh, but it was not worth 20 bucks. I would say <laughs> okay. um, if everybody that watched it pitched in, okay, it would be worth it. How many people? Like 10 bucks a person? Five bucks a person? Like what's, you know, how many people do you need for this scenario? Five five dollars a person. Five dollars a person. All right, that's that's where it sits. Okay, it's, it's totally five, fine then. Totally fine. Whatever. Okay, it, it's whatever. Don't spend twenty bucks on it if you're watching it by yourself. Okay. I always justify the twenty dollar VOD on this is a trip to the movie theaters. We're watching at the house versus the movie theater. That's the way I think about it. So if there's more than one person in the house. Say, just think of me as buying you a movie theater ticket. Right. That's the way I think about it. That's how I justify it. I also, um, not in chronological order, jumping out of chronological order. <laughs> uh, we watched uh, Wrath of Man. Okay. Uh, I had high that, hopes. It's a Guy Ritchie movie. Did you go to the theater for that, or is that also on VOD? It's on VOD. Watched oh, it on it the okay. Amazons. Nice. Everything's on fucking VOD still. I, I was just, I don't know. Okay. Yep, so. nope. I'm still rocking the VOD. I like All it. Right. I like it. Uh, no, don't watch that one. Um, <laughs> okay, all right, well, okay. That one is maybe if you can get for twenty bucks, maybe if you can get ten people on board to watch, and it's like a two dollar a ticket movie. Maybe. Uh, it, I guess. It, I mean, to to follow up, I guess on kind of our thoughts on the trailer would have been the last time we talked about it. Would you say that it felt more like a Jason Statham movie than it felt like a Guy Ritchie movie? Yeah. And and was that to its detriment? It was to its detriment. It okay. felt it Fair felt enough. um it had the dude from I think season 2 of True Detective. Season 2. Uh all right. Well, I think Vince Vaughn? I, think, I think that's I th- <laughs> no, not no, 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 not Vince Vaughn. I had that other guy. God damn it, I can't remember. I don't know his name. Anyways, it was just, it was not very good. It wasn't <laughs> very good. It was, it was pretty bad. I would say that was a pretty bad movie. Um, yeah. So don't spend money on Wrath of Man is what I would say. Um, also, uh, so I had, det- I had intentions of watching, um, I had downloaded Army of the Dead or whatever the fuck it is with Dave Bautista on Netflix. I downloaded that and I downloaded the Castlevania m- shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the episodes I hadn't seen for the airplane. Uh, and I ended up working on a um, a slideshow uh, for my dad. So um, Colton knows about this off the air. But I had, um, I had tooled around with the idea of asking my dad to adopt me because he's never formally adopted me as, as my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, Anyway, so I, I went ahead and put together a slideshow for his birthday. It's well past his birthday, but we because we're all busy, we, we didn't get together on his birthday. Um, and so we all went up to Blue Ridge this trip, and everybody was there, and I put together a slideshow. I asked my mom. I, 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 I scanned some negative photographs that managed to, managed to you know, uh, squeak by the ages of history. And... Um, I put together a slideshow of old photographs of me and my dad and uh, asked him to adopt me in a, in a nice little slideshow I put together with a little song and everything else. And, uh, and well, it was like a Pixar movie. Everybody cried, felt good about <laughs> it. <laughs> I cried about it. Uh, everybody that watched it and, and that was in the thing, in the room at the, at the time I pushed play, cried. So that felt, that felt rewarding. Uh, everybody, everybody gave a tear, um, and, uh, Pops will adopt me as, as a son. I just have to draw together the paperwork. I have the paperwork. I just, I told him, he's like, make it official. What do you mean? And I handed him the paper. I handed him the, the, Mm. like the stuff from the state of Florida. And I thought he was going to say something smart. Like he went to, he went to, he went to go say something, but then he couldn't say anything. And he and he walked over to the window and grabbed a, grabbed some paper towels and, and and cried and stuff and it was really good it was really I, I get a little 
teary-eyed thinking about it. It was it was really fucking good. Um, so yeah, so that happened. Um, so I will be adopted. I'll I'll have an adopted dad, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Um, long overdue, long overdue. Um, and then I watched Wrath of Man. I watched uh, Nobody. I watched uh, the season finale of uh. Watched the season finale of uh, The Voice and American Idol. Watched both of those. Were you satisfied with the winners? Yeah, totally called it. Okay. Totally called it. I have no idea who. (laughs) I'm totally out of the loop. I was just curious. You know, I I, I recall back in, you know, in the day, you know, watching mostly American Idol. I I, I admittedly never really watched The Voice. I, you know, I I get the format of it, but I just never really watched it. But American Idol... You know, yeah. you always had like one or two, like, you know, you kind of root for, and then, you know, it sucks when they get booted off the show and, you know, and sucks. I think I remember, I think Chris Daughtry was like someone who was like, a, I was like a big fan of, you know, when he yeah. was on the show and he was like third or fourth, like, you know, like what the uh, fuck? And it was like, this shit's rigged, dude. And I remember <laughs> God, that, f- that gray haired fuck with, uh, uh, Taylor something or another fucking. Yes. Sucked. I Anyone. remember. I'm like, fuck this show. I don't know if I ever watched after that. Maybe I swore it off after that, but I just remember being <laughs> fucking pissed. Um, yeah, no, I totally called it with this. Uh, okay. you know, and That's I think, good. I think the Fun voice has, you know, um, I think the voice has at least this season. I think the voice had better vocalists. Okay. Although the voice did have some, um, I was watching it, and uh, it's admittedly harder for me to distinguish cultural things like 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 things that are frowned upon. Uh, but I did. I, I was able to. <laughs> I was able to call out some cultural appropriation in the, in this one from the from the beebs <laughs> from the beebs. There was some hardcore cultural appropriation. I asked, I actually sent you a text message. Hey, is this what is this cultural appropriation? You're like, yes. <laughs> I'm nailing it. I got it now. I understand. Uh, so yeah. So anyways, um, yeah. The voice is totally cool. It's really fine. Um, I called the uh, I called the best vocalist, which feels good. And uh, I got. Um, Two things. Um, I put a fence between. I, so I've been. We've been working on a fence. I put a privacy I put a, fence. I put a privacy fence mm-hmm. around the around the yard. Uh, one of those white PVC conventional HOA neighborhood mm-hmm. kind of fences. Um, and the neighbor wanted to go halvesies on 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 that side. I got a really good neighbor. And he wanted to pitch in to go half on on that side over there. Uh, the neighbor has. A ridiculous home cinema. Ridiculous home cinema. <laughs> like he is like it was the coolest thing walking into his house, like when I like because he'd lived there for a year before I walked over there. Um and uh I, I you know, I got to talking to him and then I went over to his house over there and he's got like the same house, but it's like flip flopped and like I was like, dude, you're into this stuff. And he's like, Yeah, I'm definitely into this stuff. I was like, Oh man, that's fucking cool you got like way better shit than i've got anyway so he's got these sbs subs and um his half of the fence his half of the fence told him to hold on to hold on to that money and i'll get i'll pull together the rest of the cash to buy the other subwoofer i'm about to have two uh (laughs) pb 3000s SB or SVS PB 3000s in the house, which you can Google that shit. They're badass subwoofers, badass subwoofers. I'm about to have like, I think 15 Hertz, 15 Hertz or 14 Hertz subwoofers in the house. You're going to feel my shit when it goes off. You're going to feel it. <laughs> and it's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be fucking cool. It's gonna be fucking D box and, and home. D box uh, in uh, home. Big big D uh, in home. I won't want to go to the movie theater. I will not want to go to the movie theater. I already don't want to go to the movie theater now. <laughs> I will not want to go to the movie theater after I have the subwoofers. You will feel Godzilla walk in this house, and it's gonna be fucking cool. 
I'm so excited Your about it. Your hair is going to stand up when he roars. Yes. I'm I'm going to rewatch Tenet. Ooh. I'm going to rewatch <laughs> Jurassic Park. I'm going to okay. rewatch right. uh, uh fucking um uh uh Tron. I'm mm. going to oh man, the base is going to be rocking cuz I'm not going to get rid of the subwoofer I've got and then the, yeah. the towers I've got got subwoofers in them too. So <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to I don't know I don't know how I'm going to manage it. It, it's kind of on the fly kind of deal right now, uh, but big things are happening in the whole theater, <laughs> and I couldn't be more excited. Mm. Um, also, uh, we got a Peloton uh, nice. today. As of today, we got a Peloton, which is like the it's like a high tech workout bike. Like it's got like a tablet on it, a big ass tablet on it, mm-hmm. and you can like like get online with trainers and stuff and Sarah really wanted it and she's been harping on it for like I don't know six or eight months or whatever it's been and uh something popped up on the Facebook marketplace somebody was selling it uh for like a thousand dollars less than a new one which was like a really good deal because they never pop up and so yeah let's go ahead and get it so we went ahead and got the Peloton uh Sarah did her uh her first uh her first ride and apparently it was a pretty significant workout. I'm excited to get on it. Um they have like a they have like a thing like of everybody that hops into the to because they have like they have trainers that hop on and do like live broadcasts of of the training and they tell you like how to set the resistance and whatever and you can monitor that on your screen and um and then they have a tracker of like the people that you're riding with. Mm-hmm. And my biggest gripe with working out is I can't find anybody to work out with. And right. I've always like, whenever I did work out, I always worked out with somebody and it's always helpful to have that like competitive nature or whatever, you know what I, I thrive on that. Um, so now anyways, when I hop, if I hop on and I register myself as a rider, when I hop on, I can, I can be competing against somebody on the screen and I'm kind of really excited about that. Um, so it's kind of like an interactive workout bicycle, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, so, and we're getting married next year. So Sarah's trying to get in real good shape. And I like being in shape. Um, yeah, Got to look, look good for the wedding, the wedding pics and all, and all that good stuff. That's yeah, it. I and I, it. I like being in shape. You know, I've gotten, I've gotten fat and lazy at the car dealership. They eat fast food a lot and everything too else. Too much Burger King. Too much. Too Burger much Burger King. King. Too much checkers. They put a new checkers in. Uh, checkers oh, no. has some real fucking oh, good burgers. Oh no! Now you, now you have options. <laughs> <laughs> I got Wendy's uh, and Hardee's. Everything uh, in fucking Zephyr Hills. Fucking fast food. Uh, I got that shit on point. I got that shit on point. Like I got my I got my fast food routine down, uh, <laughs> and it's a serious fucking problem. I will admit it. It's a serious problem. I like to quit these puffers. Uh, maybe I'll start trimming back on the alcohol, except when we record. Uh, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how in shape I can be in a year. Um, but now we have a really expensive fucking workout bicycle, so I feel compelled to nice. to Good utilize stuff. it. So yeah, so that's cool. Um, I also watched your ass graduate. You, yeah. Okay. All right. Well. I yeah. did watch that. Um, it was it was streamed online as I promised. Yeah, and I did I did cue it up. Uh, there were some very very impressive speeches. Like some speeches actually like kind of gave me some chills. Like the people that were attending your school that that whatever position they're in. Um, mm. I don't I don't I don't pretend to know a whole lot about what's going on up there. Uh, but the people that that especially the students that gave the speeches. Um, they were very compelling speeches. There was one person that, uh, one girl that gave out a bunch of statistics for people that were like attending night school or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh man. And the, the drive that those people have to make their dreams come true is absolutely fucking insane. Like it's just, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the people that attended your school have, have an incredible drive. Um, inspired me. Like I was sitting there at work. I was sitting there like doing tag work and shit. And I'm like, 
dude, did you? Because I had it on my phone. I had it on my phone, mm-hmm. and I had it propped up in like a card holder. So like Trevor, the guy I work with, he was listening to it while we're sitting there splitting deals and doing paperwork, and the phones are ringing and shit. It's like, did you hear about this chick, man? Did you see what she did? And like, we're, it's like a, it, it was, it was, it was awesome to watch your graduation. Um, it was very cool. And uh, yeah, watch your ass walk across across the stage, and everybody that was in the office. I kid you not. No exaggeration. I said, guys, he's graduating. I hold up the phone. Like, well, watch this. And somebody went to talk. I'm like, no, listen, watch this. And and they come over, and everybody in the office watched you walk across the stage. And I didn't trip. And, so and he didn't trip. And uh, they 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 read your name correctly, which was fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, admittedly, the phone rang when Anna 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 came across the stage, and I had to fucking pick that shit up. I couldn't screenshot or do anything special for Anna. Really feel yeah. bad about it. Uh, but it, I guess it is what it is. And she doesn't really. She probably doesn't give a shit if I fucking screenshotted anything. So she got her. She got her. I think. Degree. I think. I think my dad snagged a few. So uh, I think. I think, I think. I think. I think he had you covered. That's what counts. Uh, but yeah, good job, dude. It's absolutely incredible. It's been a long fucking haul. Long haul. Long but you, haul. But you fucking did it. And it's I awesome. Did it. You did it. Thank dude. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 gratifying. It is, honestly. It's it was nice to have obviously for me an in person graduation and, and you know, I wish that my parents could have been there. I don't know if you logistically would have been able to make it, you know, uh, given the distance and that was on like a fucking Thursday afternoon or whatever. So, <laughs> you know, it would have been, it would have been a tough swing obviously, but it was nice that for, for, for people that would have had trouble to, to actually logistically make it in person, it was nice to have the opportunity to have people kind of join along. And from what I can tell, the actual production of it was, was pretty well, pretty well done. It seemed it was. to, you know, to kind of go good. off without a hitch. So I, I was, I was happy with that. Um, yeah, it was just good. You know, it kind of after a year and a half of kind of just doing law school online, I kind of have at least some last thing in person. Just felt like a nice sense of completion to it. So yeah, um, thank you, thank you. Um, the coolest uh, thing is, and it has to it. be said. It has to be said. If you know mm-hmm. one thing about Colton Brown, he starts a lot of fucking projects, and a lot of those fucking <laughs> projects fall at the wayside. Like, it's like, okay, I get distracted, I'll go on to this other thing. Uh, his video game, his video game compendium is like a perfect... I play many game. video games. <laughs> I don't finish many. <laughs> right. Uh, there's a lot of projects um, that get completed. This podcast is one of them, and his, and his fucking law degree is another. Um, yeah. And there's... there's uh, that's a big deal. That's a fucking huge deal. Um, and from the bottom of my heart, I can't tell you how proud I am that you fucking completed this thing that you set out to do m- close to, what, eight years ago? Like, you went to UF, and then you got sucked into the Coast Guard. And I thought for sure, because of the work schedule and the co- the shit that the Coast Guard had you doing, I'll just ride this shit out. That's a fucking gravy train. I'll ride it out. But no, he's not satisfied. Says I'm getting out of this shit and I'm going back to school. And he I fucking the completes time it. I needed yeah. the time off. It, you know, it 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 it, it rejuvenated um, the interest. It, it uh, charged the batteries a little bit, I guess, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a long haul, um, but I'm I'm kind of glad it kind of I'm glad it kind of took the path that it did. I think that if I had tried Fuck to do yeah. it another way, it wouldn't have worked out uh, the same way. So fortuitous obviously you know meeting anna too i you know i have to admit you know that's obviously uh another aspect of it but you know um just doing the thing obviously in and of itself was obviously very exciting too so and it's just satisfying to be done with it so on to the next thing like i said studying for the bar um not an easy task but a necessary one so it's it's uh you know moving on and up or whatever so yeah it's good um do you have anything else that you've been up to before I no. go into my little 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 spiel yeah, here? Yeah, go to your spiel, dude. Well, I guess before I do that, I will say um, I didn't I didn't really respond, but it was really awesome hearing um, you know you putting the presentation for for your dad and hearing about that. That was really great. You actually did say something a little bit on air a couple episodes back, and then you didn't say anything on the following episode, and and I added those two episodes like back to back, and I was just like, oh. I don't know if that's going to give off a no? bad, bad, bad energy. 
and you didn't want to talk about it. So I was going to follow up with you on that uh, when I had a second, and uh, and 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 now obviously I don't because obviously I heard I heard what you said. So that's great. So I, I'm 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 really happy to hear that. I'm really really happy for you, uh, and and uh, it's great. Uh, in terms of, uh, I don't have a Peloton, but Anna and I have been doing fitness boxing on the Switch. Fuck that's yeah, our, that's dude. our Peloton equivalent. <laughs> Uh, it's rock band, but instead of um, instead of playing a plastic instrument, you do a very specific type of punch. Uh, so so it gets you moving. So you got some jabs, you got some straights, you got some hooks, you got some uppercuts in there. Henry Cavill, more, Henry Cavill type of uh, loading the guns, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. It might throw off the Joy-Con, like it might register as a punch when you're not actually punching. But you can always reload whenever <laughs> you want. I mean, not everyone else, not everyone can reload their fists Henry Cavill style. It's a very specific. Uh, set of skills required for that sort of uh, maneuver, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, head on graduate. Well, you head on graduation for me, so I really don't need to to do anything else with that. But obviously, since graduation, I you know it's been a little while. I, it's been close to a couple of weeks since I graduated. Uh, we went out to Boston for a night, which was fun. Um, first time I've been in Boston as an adult. My dad tells me I was there as a child. I don't remember it. I'm not sure if I believe him still, but <laughs> I remember this one. It was fun. Saw the Braves play the Red Sox. Uh, got rained out after six innings, but we went to a bar and had a grand time, so it was just fine. Um, and uh, we stayed with one of Anna's friends, and so it was nice. It was it was a good time. Got a little, little time away, you know, celebrating and stuff. Um, I went to a baseball game as well not yeah that's right you, you, you went that's right you went to a raise game i think the the night before that i was yeah. going to a game yeah so <laughs> spent, I went, we I, both I, spent some money on beers let's say that <laughs> i went into the assumption uh i don't go to many mlb games so i remember colton telling me while he was in jacksonville that, hey i went to this baseball game and they had dollar beer night I'm like that's fucking incredible i'll go to watch baseball so i went to the mlb game Beer was fucking fourteen dollars. So got to... <laughs> what kind of beer did you get for fourteen dollars? Is that craft? Are you getting you getting some? No, BLs? I got a craft. I got a okay, like a like a copper copper tail midnight swim or okay. whatever the fuck it is. Okay, it's yeah, the, the porter for fourteen dollars. Oh, okay. You got to get the most. You got to get the most for your money. You know, so, yeah, you got to get the highest ABV. Yeah, exactly. Uh, bang for the buck. Thanks so, for the buck, baby. <laughs> so I got. I think I got like two of those. Mm-hmm. I also am highly disappointed on so. I went in and I said, you know, I want a fucking goddamn hot dog. I want a nice foot long hot dog. That's what I want. A hot dog? I want a foot long hot dog. I want to go and eat a ballpark Frank. You know what I mean? I don't know if a ballpark Frank is a foot long. They didn't even have the toppings for a hot dog. They had they had a station for ketchup and mustard for the fucking hot dogs. And no I got relish, a hot no dog. onions, nothing like that? No. Like, I wanted a chili dog, to be fair, but I understand that that's not yeah. quote-unquote ballpark Frank kind of thing, you know? Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. But I expected at least the options for some fresh onions and some, you know, I expected a, like, a, to be honest, I expected a, a buffet for hot dog toppings. That's what I expected, you know? I feel like I've seen relish and onions for sure at a, at a ballpark. Not before, at this so ballpark. Not unfair. Not at this well, ballpark. That's that's a, why the Rays are trying to get a new stadium is because the Trop doesn't have enough hot dog food options. Man, I got a hot dog that wasn't even six inches long. It wasn't even a, f- a half foot fucking foot long hot dog. Some bitch was like four inches <laughs> and and I got ketchup and I got mustard. Now it was a very unimpressive girth, you would say. It was an unimpressive girth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> It was a good hot dog. It was a it was a it was a satisfying hot dog, but it how was, much did it how much did it run you? Twelve dollars. <laughs> Good God! Did that come with fries at least. <laughs> no, Sarah. Sarah got a pretzel and some and some. Uh, she got so. This is how unsatisfying the hot dog was. I got a I got a hot dog with some ketchup and some mustard, and it was very short. Sarah got some. Uh, chips and cheese like nachos and cheese and a pretzel and i i had to at least have i had to eat the hot dog i had to eat half the half the fucking chips and cheese and i had to eat half the goddamn pretzel in order to get halfway <laughs> full like i i just uh, wanted a fucking the hot dog man couldn't even get a hot dog at the and then we lost on top of that we lost 
I did notice that. Yeah, losing to the Royals. Ugh, unacceptable. Unacceptable. I think, I think the Rays won the following night. That's there just, were just the, there were works, a couple you know? of exciting plays, though. I will admit that. Okay. There okay. were a couple of exciting plays. I got a little excited. I got a little edge in my sheet a little bit in, in baseball, which is uh, doesn't happen frequently. Uh, but there were some cool plays. That okay. one guy, they got that one guy. Um, he was the designated batter for the game. I think usually he plays first place and he does the splits. Oh, uh, is it G-Man? G-Man. G-Man Choi. G-Man. Yes. Yeah. That dude's fucking incredible. I yeah, thought he was gonna, awesome. I thought he was going to slam the shit. He's huge. He never slammed it. He never slammed it. <laughs> it is, it is slam it. That's unfortunate. <laughs> no, but uh, I did enjoy the baseball game. I did enjoy Good. it, even Good. though I didn't get adequate beer or food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we ate before we went up to Fenway, but we did get some brewskis at Fenway. Not fourteen dollars. It was I think it's eleven fifty per. There were cans. I don't know if you got draft, but we got cans. No, nope, no like draft. Tall boy, tall boy. They're like tall boy cans, but I got a, I think I got a Sam Adams like summer summer whatever it is, and then uh there was a Lord Hobo, which is like a more local one, which was pretty good. A hazy IPA, like a six and a half percent hazy IPA tall boy for like eleven bucks. And I was like Honestly, for a ballpark, that's not crazy. So, um, no hot yeah. dogs. No hot Finley dogs. Did, did not. I'm sure they sell them, but I didn't. I didn't check out the the options for them. I, I wasn't hungry at that point. Oh, another thing. I went to go back and get another beer, but it was like eight o'clock, was, was it, and they stopped it, serving beer at seven o'clock. <laughs> it was based on time. It's not based yeah. on where it was in the game. No, no. It was. It was based. Was it, on was the, it the eighth inning? inning? Was it the, uh, the Fenway Something. stops after the seventh? So I don't. I think I don't know. It's, it's, it's the same. A, seventh it's around inning. the same. I think for most. Yeah. Yeah. Seventh inning. I, I went back to get another beer. I was like, ah, we we don't serve beer at the seventh inning. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> what about extra guess, innings? What if, what if the race wa- tie it? I got a water and pe- fucking peanuts <laughs> for eight dollars. I got a bag of peanuts for eight dollars and fucking water. God damn. Got some this peanuts and Cracker Jack. <laughs> this is nothing like a hockey game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. True. It's the true. hockey games are completely different. Yeah, it's a bit of a different vibe, isn't it? So, and there was a, yeah. there, uh, another thing. I, I know we're getting <laughs> off in the weeds here. But the fucking heckler, there was a heckler two seats down. He kept saying, hey, better, better, better. Oh, swing. And he was fucking doing it. So I tried to do it. And, it, and nothing fucking happened. I just felt like an idiot when I tried it. But this fucking guy was being loud and obnoxious over there yelling swing, batter, batter, swing, or whatever the fuck he was saying. Pissed me off. And I tried to get everybody on board, but nobody nobody would do the same thing. So I was the only one screaming it. And I felt like an idiot. And the fucking heckler. Anyways, it's fucking baseball. Fucking baseball. A baseball guy. <laughs> yeah. Well... My baseball game, I think, was a little better experience, at least, uh, you know, first time as an adult, minimally, in, in Fenway. Braves lost. Uh, it was a bit of a bummer. They they blew it because, uh, you know, because of the Braves. That's what they do, I guess. But yeah, Boston was fun. It was cool. We were only there for a night, um, so it was, it was kind of a, a, a quick trip, uh, and then back down, uh, got, got, got some furniture on the, on the, on the way down, which was cool. For the new uh, place? For the new place. So that brings me to my the next paint. Uh, you know, as I said, you know, we, we, we've moved some stuff to, to the new place. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress right now. It's, it's nice. Um, had, had some, some issues. Uh, you know, it wasn't totally clean. Uh, we'll say when we walked in. Had had some company that was trying to do some last minute touches on, on renovating the place. But... Yeah, it'll be home before long. So uh, this may be the last podcast I record where I currently reside. I don't know. We'll see. We're getting the internet set up on Thursday, uh, a couple days from when we're recording, and uh, and so uh, you know might be able to move everything over. Uh, all my proper stuff is getting moved in, in just about a week's time. My furniture, my 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 TV. I guess I'm actually going to take the TV over sooner. But the dresser, bookcase, all the big stuff is going to go over bed. Uh, and so uh, it'll be nice. It'll but be once nice Anna's once bed's in. in, once Anna's bed's in, you guys are, are are spending the night at the new place. Yep, and and that'll be tomorrow. Yeah, we're we're gonna take most of her stuff over tomorrow. We're kind of doing it ourselves with the U-Haul, so it'll be a, it'll be a long, exhausting day. Should probably get some decent sleep tonight. We'll see. 
Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, um, it's exciting. I'll send pictures at least. And to you. you guys have a badass spot too. But... You guys have a badass place. I'm, we're, we're, I'm excited we're, to go see it. We're we're sitting in an old city in in Philadelphia, which for those not overly familiar with the area, many people will know what the Liberty Bell is. We're basically right next to the Liberty Bell. We're right next to Independence Hall. There's a ton of green space right around us. It's it's a touristy area for sure, um, but uh, they've renovated this this super old building into apartment spaces, and uh, so we're really That's excited cool. about the location. Super walkable. Parking fucking sucks. <laughs> um, but that's the trade off is you live in a you know cool part of the city, and what do you know parking sucks so anyway uh that's what's going on in that uh so in terms of what else you know I've been up to uh since <laughs> I'm surprised we've been here longer than I actually thought we would be, but hey, it is what it is. we're having fun um we finished new girl uh the other pandemic show that that Anna and I started we you know the West Wing I talked about is finishing the West Wing it was a very big deal. We finally finished uh New Girl as well uh which was like our comedy side West Wing was the drama, and then we had New Girl if we wanted the comedy in our lives and um really enjoyed the show you know um like there was like a season or two in there where it kind of dipped a little bit in terms of like uh eh, writing's not as sharp whatever man but it was very enjoyable it's, it's um got a great cast great you know a uh, bunch of characters in it you know you, it's like a, you know any kind of sitcom you fall in love with everyone and and you enjoy kind of how everyone interacts that the writing was was pretty consistently fun putting everyone in kind of weird zany situations and stuff this this last season i think was season 7 it was only like 8 episodes and it was a there was a time skip um I didn't need the last season is, is kind of how I felt about it. I didn't think it was bad. I just didn't think it was necessary. It almost like, you know, it was trying to like tie up loose ends, but like we kind of like, it basically just took all the loose ends in the direction that everyone expected they would end up. Like, you know, they could have filled in the gaps in their head and it would have been just as well. Um, but it was still good. And it, and it felt like a, you know, a satisfying conclusion to it all. It didn't, you know, it wasn't anything that, that, that sucked. It wasn't a game of Thrones, like, Oh, this retroactively ruined the whole fucking series, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> um, so it was good. I recommend new girl. It's all on Netflix. If anyone wants to watch it, it's just a very charming, very, very charming, uh, comedy with, with, uh, with a good cast. Zoe Deschanel, um, Jake Johnson, uh, Lamorne Morris. Um, Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good. I recommend it. We're we're. I'm dragging this on. <laughs> I'm a I'm a bottle of apothic dark. And that's the apothic and dark. Well, I I must say I switched to the coffee porter, and maybe that's been part of it too. You know, as promised, I switched to it. So we were struggling to find something to watch. I was cooking dinner. Sarah put on a show called Fucking Hoarders. Hoarders. Okay, is that a TLC show? I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's dark as shit. <laughs> it's it's just, real just, fucking just, just, dark. just people hoarding shit, right? It's That's just, pretty much what it is. Yeah, I think it's a TLC show or something. It's one of those. I caught those. the first episode. <laughs> Let me put this in perspective real quick. <laughs> These older folks. Uh, they, 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 uh, I had to reset. I'm going to reset. First episode. You got this older lady and this older guy, and they live in this three-story, really nice house in like... Um, it's like one of those white picket fence neighborhoods up north. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, just a really fucking nice house. Sure. All right. Uh, big yard, like a half acre yard, white picket fence, three stories tall. Uh, they described it in the show as a mansion. It's not what I would describe as a mansion, but it's a big ass old fucking house. Right? <laughs> it's dark as shit. The... <laughs> The the guy was a firefighter and he had a wife and then they had three kids. Well, the wife was depressed and she killed herself in the fucking basement of this house. The the family friend moved in and she married the dude within like a year. The 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 music teacher of the kids. She taught the kids how to play fucking piano, right? And she got to be a really close family friend. The wife killed herself in the basement of this house. The kids are all fucked up. <laughs> and and they she, she marries the fucking guy within a year, huh. and then she starts hoarding all the shit. But what is she all hoarding? Sh- like just everything? Fucking everything. <laughs> In this three story house, they pull out something. I could look it up, but I want to say it's like thirty. I think it's like thirty tons worth of shit. It got to be where she moved out. 
she said peace and they're old now right they're real old the the lady the the lady left and left the fucking firefighter dude enough space to sleep on a couch inside this house he could not go up any of the stairs it was hoarded to the max hoarded to the fucking max like you could not see anything anywhere it was brutal all right so they go through this intervention process and you're like okay maybe things will get better right maybe like they can maybe they can save the relationship and this and that no none of that shit happens <laughs> she's super standoffish every time they pull anything out of the house she starts hoarding shit on the porch like hey i want that i want this i want that and she's super pissy about everything and and Dave, Dave, Dave's the dude. Dave's sitting on the other side of the porch, not saying anything at all, just shaking his head. You know, just shaking it. He's on oxygen. He's sick. You know, it's real sad. It's real fucking dark. He's over on the other porch. Anyways, in the middle of the episode, maybe on the tail end of the episode, they come together and like you think everything's going to be fine. They clean up the house and this and that. They take all the shit out. The 30 tons worth of shit. Um, that There's so much shit in the house that it's caving in the fucking, like the floors of the house. Like it's filled <laughs> to the max. Okay. And then... <sighs> The subtitles happen at the end of the episode. <laughs> Dave, yes. Oh, oh, like explaining what's what, yeah, what like, happened. Like the okay. aftermath of the thing. Okay, okay. The follow up. She she says <laughs> she she moves out. She never had any intention of moving in the house. So she she lives with her son. She moves back out. She doesn't move back in the house. Dave dies, and because of all the shit that happened, because of all of her hoarding. The kids had to sell the fucking house. They had to sell the house and get out. And that was it. That was the end of the episode. <laughs> so it's just like, God damn, this is so fucking dark. I watched it. I watched it probably with another bottle of wine. And by the end of the episode, I was like, you know, I started my knife. I was I had an okay day at work. I was totally fine. I came in and I was like, God damn, this is fucking heavy. This is really rough. And Hoarders is dark shit, dude. Don't dive into hoarders. Wasn't um, planning can, on it, but but yeah. noted. <laughs> if you're if you're curious about it, or if any of the listeners are curious about it, hoarders is a fucking hard road. That's a hard that's a hard train to ride. Um, real dark. Uh, first episode really sets up the paces. I'm kind of curious what happens in season two. I'm kind of like in a morbid <laughs> way. I'm kind of I'm kind of itching to watch episode two. Anyways, so not to take it into the weeds, but I took it in the fucking just weeds. a little bit. That's okay. We're having fun. We're having fun. Uh, in the interest of time, I, I will just uh, cut down a little bit. Um, talk about a couple movies that I watched uh, recently. Um, they're they're ones a sequel to the other, so they they kind of go together. Uh, I, I watched uh, uh, Anna had bought the like the Blu-ray, I think the two pack collection of Elizabeth and Elizabeth: The Golden Age. Um, I don't, need, I don't think these are films you've seen. Maybe you have. I don't know. I don't know what you do with your life. I don't think so. Uh, Kate Blanchett plays uh, Queen Elizabeth I, um, and uh, you know Anna is, is very much into like like the Tudors, like English history. It's not really anything that I fuck with too much, to be honest. It's not. It's I just I just don't know a lot about it. I really don't. Yeah, you know, and it's a, it's interesting stuff. I just don't know anything about it. But she wanted to watch these movies. She's wanted to watch them. I think for a few months. I think she's seen both of them before. Um, and liked both of them and just hadn't seen them in a while and wanted to revisit them was kind of just feeling the itch. So I watched and them with you her. Would, yeah, I watched her. I just, I just, I just went on the journey, yeah. journey with her, you know, put it in. Let's um, see what it's about. <laughs> you know, uh, I enjoyed them. I, I think they, I think they're both good. Kate Blanchett is amazing. She's always amazing. I think that probably goes without saying, but she's very good in both of these. The first one I was watching it, like the first 15 minutes, I'm like, what the, f- when the, f- fuck was this movie made because it felt like just very dated in terms of like its approach to filmmaking and it was like made in like i think 97 somewhere around there i was like okay that makes a lot of sense i can enjoy this more knowing like this is not just some dude doing some weird dated dated thing um but she's good she looked she looked very youthful as well it's just like this this must be an old movie this must be older kate kate blanchett i think is, is 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 timeless i think she still looks great today but you know, she did look younger then, I guess. So she does age. It's that's you know, she does age. You <laughs> she's know. not fucking Paul, myth busted. Paul Rudd. She's not Paul. Nope, Rudd. She's not Paul Rudd. She's not Tom Cruise. You know, um, 
but yeah, it was good. Uh, you know, I think the first one's got like some good plotting. It's, you know, it feels a little bit more kind of self-serious, but it's good. You know, it's just kind of interesting story about Elizabeth's kind of rise to power and, you know, her, her basically taking the crown. Um, I, th- I thought it was interesting. You know, I don't know if it's super historically accurate. I couldn't speak to that. I'm sure there's many articles online or you could probably just ask Anna. She probably knows um, about that sort of thing. But I did enjoy it. And then the second one was made about 10 years later. It's the same director, Kate Blanchett again, but, you know, a little bit more modern sensibilities, a little bit more still kind of like, like it had like the same like type of opening credits and stuff as the first one did, like kind of, kind of keeping them consistent with each other. Uh, And they bring in Clive Owen as like the male lead in it. And he's, he's having a grand old fucking time. I'll tell you that. He's having a grand old time, and I and I and I respect that. He was he was hamming it up a little bit. He was having a great time. Um, he's playing like I think Sir Walter Raleigh, maybe something like that. Uh, he was good. He was he was good. Kate Blanchett was good. You know, I I don't know. I I kind of felt like they were. I look. It was interesting. I looked it up. The first one got really good reviews. I think the second one didn't get as good reviews. Like got like pretty mediocre. And I didn't think that like there was like one was significantly better than the other. Like I felt like, you know, Clive Owen was hamming it up a little bit more in the second one, but I also like Joseph fine was like the, the lead character and, 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 or the lead, like the lead male and, and the, and the first movie. And he's, I think he's one of like the main, like male characters in handmaid's tale. Um, so you might recognize him from that. Okay. But, um, I don't know. I think I just enjoyed them kind of both equally. They were, they were, they were fun. Um, you know, good, like great costume design, great set design, great production design all around, like really capturing this era uh, of, of England, I thought was just very cool. The second one deals uh, more with uh, um, Mary Queen of Scots and like, you know, like the, the, the plot that she kind of became involved in to to take over the English throne. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know. So you're with me. You're with me. I, you know, but the, the, it's interesting stuff. And I, and I thought that like just the, they were well-made movies, well-produced movies, well-acted movies that just kind of like were, were enjoyable and good. And, you know, and if they're historically accurate, they're you're welcome. better for it, you know? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if they are. I'm sure they took liberties here and there. I w- that would be my guess. Cause I think, well, I think like the first, like, you know, like Elizabeth the first is known as the Virgin queen. And like the movie is definitely like, yeah, she's definitely fucking this one guy. And it's like, well, she's not really the Virgin queen, but she never married is kind of the idea. Um, and so, you know, like throughout the movies that are like, everyone's like, you should really marry and, and have an heir to really secure your secure the throne. Otherwise people are always going to be sniping at you. Uh, and pe- people were always sniping. I'll tell you that. So, um, yeah, that's good. I enjoyed them. Oh, <laughs> let's cut you off again. <laughs> thought another I, I'm thing done. About so what, whatever you got, whatever you got. Uh, Saint Maud. I watched Saint Maud. Oh yeah. I think that that's a doozy. That one there yeah. is a fucking doozy. Okay. Uh, that, a doozy. That, that, yeah, yeah. Eight, eight. It's an eight twenty four yeah. movie. Um, it is artistic. It is well shot the um the characters are interesting um it's a movie um <laughs> definitely definitely not for everybody mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. feel like um it's pretty typical of a24 it's not exactly yeah a, we don't make movies for everyone type of type of studio that's it um it's 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 self-indulgent i feel like it it mm. it you know, it, okay. it almost like a uh, su- superior suburbia. What the, what the fuck? Suspiria. Was that mean? What? Suspiria. But like the yeah. like the, the the more modern, like the remake. Yeah, like yeah, it's okay. just it's it's uh, it's fully satisfied to just wallow in itself. Sure. Um, it was. It's not as out there as that one is, and it's not as long. It's much more breezy. Um, that's, that's good. That one was almost what three hours, something like that. Yeah, nowhere near, too much, nowhere near that too level of Luka. commitment. Stop. I think this is like an hour and a half or something like that. Um, it's not that hard of a watch, but it is a little weird. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't get me wrong. I didn't. I I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I just I I don't I don't you know like covering that sort of stuff is is a little different. You know, like you you have to acknowledge that it's not. Like I don't even know if it was for me. Like I went in, I went into a horror movie expecting like a hereditary kind of situation or something like that. 
Yeah. Uh, and I don't even think it was really kind of like that. It was just um, heavy on religion um, and and kind of the, um, I don't know quite how to put it, but it was, it. there's a way to put it, I know, and it's right there on the tip of my tongue, but Apothic is blocking my mind. <laughs> um, it's... How how people interact with their faith, and I I enjoyed that aspect of it a lot. Yeah. Um, and 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 how mental mental illness and things like that, because I think it was a it was timed appropriately with its release, mm-hmm. with uh with you know COVID and everything else, people being isolated and whatnot, and how people grapple with that, and and clearly the person that was you know the the, the film was centered around was not in their in their right mind um but it was uh you know it was artistically done it was an artistic movie it's definitely an art house movie so uh if you're not into that you're not into saint maude i promise you uh it, even if you are into art house movies you might not be into saint, saint maude uh but it was um i enjoyed it i thought it was i thought it was an enjoyable film um okay. just on the fringes i i would say yeah um Anyway, so I think I think that concludes everything that I've been up to. <laughs> We've just been going back and forth, but I, yeah. I will I will end that here. I, I have no more to offer uh, for this episode. So I think I think with your leave, I think we could go ahead and say that, that that's that's the episode. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Right. I don't think I've cut you to off. Anything else. If you remember anything else? Put it put it on your phone. Write it down on a list. We'll talk about it next time. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash watch, view, repeat, you can get early access to all of our uh, regular episodes. Um, <laughs> Fast and Furious is sneaking up on us. I don't know if you still want to do a Fast and Furious bonus episode. I don't know if that's... Holy shit, I don't know if that's, that's an endeavor. I don't know if that's biting off more than we can actually chew. I don't know, but it's an idea. But anyway, if we have any bonus episodes that we tinker with and, and, and manage to get out for... For, for the good folks at home, then uh, then that would be on our Patreon on a timed exclusive access uh, bonuses. On a timed exclusive access as well. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't have Apothic. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Coffee porter. It's like 7%, man. I don't know. It's been a few days since I've, since I've drank, so if I'm, I'm, my tolerance has probably lessened. I don't know. Anyway, patreon.com slash watchreviewrepeat. Uh, our website is watchreviewrepeat.com. Uh, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at WRRPod, uh, like us on Facebook, just by searching for our page. Uh, just search for Watch of Your Repeat. You should be able to find us and uh, like our page that way. Questions, comments, and suggestions for a future edition of the Listener's Corner, as mentioned earlier, uh, please send those our way. Watch Your Repeat at gmail.com. We'd be happy to talk about anything you guys have been up to and uh, you know, go from there. If you watch Castlevania, uh, send us your thoughts on Season 4. Uh if you saw a little something called A Quiet Place Part 2, maybe send us some thoughts as well. Maybe we'll be talking about that soon. Maybe, maybe. If I could convince Andrew to see a movie in a theater. Uh, it's been a while, so that might be an uphill battle, but we'll see. Uh, intro and outro track is Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. And yes, our next episode will... Maybe, probably, it be will on a be, quiet place part two. I don't. I don't want to commit. Place part two. I all will, right. I will right. go to the movie. I will go to the cinemas. It's it's funny. Anna and I watched the first one, and and uh, it it was she she doesn't do horror movies. I think generally speaking, uh, and uh, I I think I think I'm gonna have to venture to the theater solo <laughs> for this second one. <laughs> so uh, I I will make it happen at some point. So. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll both be pulling off a theater visit, so that might that might be a conversation in and of itself if we, if we can make it happen. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll shoot for it. We'll we'll talk about it, and then and uh, we'll have some thoughts. We'll have some thoughts to share. So look forward to that. Until then, Andrew, why don't you take us out? Take care now. Bye bye then. Later's on the Manche. <laughs>